Welcome into the Cam District Podcast, episode number 153. And you look terrible. Oh, yeah. Like, I know. it's a good, you know, people like, uh, they say to me all the time, like, uh, lots of people have reached out to me. Lots of people reach out to me every day, as a matter of fact. I get I'm sure they do. Private messages. My messages are open. I want to tell all the people my messages are open, and then they already mine, know. Mine too. Um, okay. Well, mine are, and mm-hmm. they tell me, uh, you know, we'd like to see you guys maybe do some video, but when I see you look the way that you do right now, like I it's know. a good thing. It's Can't a good thing it. we're not. Well, it hurts the it hurts the brand when you look like a you look like fucking dog shit. I'm sniffling. I'd even party just so I all y'all now. It's the it's it's it could be the pollen. It could be I uh, I've been outside all goddamn day. It could be I got the Halloween decorations out out of the basement, which has like dust and shit, and that's why I look like a fucking crackhead. I look like shit. I feel kind of decent, but I'm sniffling like a crackhead, and it's not good. Mm. It's not good for the brand. All right, the Canvas Trick Podcast is brought to you by Hair Club. <laughs> <laughs> and they could help you, Cam. And they you really need a little more help. You need a Man, little more. I need. I got a cul-de-sac. We talk about that all the time. I don't like going places where I don't have. To, I can't wear a hat. It does still bother me. I'm a very confident guy. The front part of my hair looks fine because they got that done. I just need to get the back part done now because the front. You're like Cam. You look good, but then I turn around like, oh, Cam, you have a cul-de-sac. They could fix that. Hair club could fix that. They got all kinds of different procedures you could do, baby. I got the front part done uh, here in St. Louis a couple years ago. Easy process. And uh, you guys, man, I'm telling you, when you look in the mirror, Andy, I'm telling you this right now. And you see that's fucked, that hair fa- falling out. It is a depressing feel. You you feel yourself aging. And I'm telling you guys right now, you got a solution. And it's called Hair Club for Men, baby. It's there. And they got they got shit that you could do. All kinds of different options. And that's the key word, solutions. They've got a lot of different solutions. Um, Now, for those who are asking you right now, I mean, listen, you could do the front and the back at the same time. You don't have to put it off like Cam did. I mean, Cam did the front, didn't do the back. Well, I did. And and, and hold on. You can do both. You don't know shit. You don't know (laughs) shit. Let me fucking explain it. You got gray hair. Your your hair ain't that fucking good, okay? So don't act like you're fucking not losing. I, I evaluate you every day. Your teeth are white. That's about it. Your hair ain't that fucking nice. Dude. Act like you're fucking Blaine Gabberth or something. Get on with yourself, Andy. Blaine Here's the Gabbert. deal. Dude, no he's one knows a, who that is. Who's yeah, he's a quarterback. Nobody. Very. I don't know why that popped in my head. He's a very... How oh, about the... Uh, so, what about so the weird. Chargers quarterback? The Chargers... Uh, Herbert. Uh, Herbert. Yeah. He's Herbert. a handsome bugger. You ain't him. How's that? You ain't him. Tom, Tom Brady. Like Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron, Aaron, oh, he looks old. He Russell looks old. Wilson. I like him a lot, too. He's a very good dude. Uh, anyway, here's the point. You do. You, you pick out how many follicles you want. They take it out in the back of your head. I mean, there's all kinds mm. of procedures you could do. But you can get your – you could do 1,500 different hair strands and do major, 700 in the front, and then it kind of just flows out in the back. You got options. Where you're losing your hair the most, they'll put the, the more uh, hair follicles in that particular area. But you could just – you can kind of just zone it out the way you want it. Where you're balding, they'll put, the, they'll put more hair – uh, from the back of your head. They don't put a scar. It's not a big scar or anything. They pluck out the healthy hair in the back of your head, which you, you have plenty of plethora of hair back there. And they implement it into your front and your balding areas. It's a very easy process. It don't hurt. I got it done and I'm watching fucking Legends of the Fall with, with fucking Brad Pitt. And I'm like, <gasps> and they're doing my hair, Andy. And I'm looking at that handsome bugger. And I'm like, oh, my God. And he's got the blonde hair flowing. And I'm like, I'm going to be him. I'm going to be him. I'm in this little chair. The nurses are so sweet and nice. I'm kind of passing out, drooling on myself. And they're kind of laughing at me in a cute, funny way. But I was watching a movie. And by the end of the movie, boom, dunzo, dunzo. And then over time, it just grows back. And it's such a fucking awesome feeling. Honestly, Andy, it really is. No, no. It's got to be a great feeling for you. And you got a lot of you got a lot of good feeling to come. <laughs> Because I mean, we're what talking the hell phase does one. That mean? Well, you got to get to the next phase. You got to get to the next phase. And there's a whole other phase to get to. Uh, oh my god! <laughs> look at, look at, that. Look at yeah, that. I do need to. Well, good thing we got a title sponsor. <laughs> I know. Let me tell nice? the people though. Over 1,200 North American locations. So, like, no matter where you're at, there's a location near you. Yeah. Yeah, just baby. stop on by. Sometimes I like to stop by and just like say hello to the people. They love me there, Kim. They I'm, do, they, they don't just, they? They do. They're just like, come they on do. in. 
Come, Come on, on in. in. Uh, we take some photos and stuff like that. They have over 1,100, 1,100 hair health professionals. Dude. I mean, I mean, so they've got something for everybody. 700 combinations of personalized solutions. So if you're thinking, man, I wonder if there's a solution for me. The answer is yes, because oh, they God, have yeah. over 700 of them. So lots of solutions. They have a solution for everyone. Hair Club. The only national provider of all hair loss and hair thinning solutions under one roof. I mean, God who dang. else can say that? Who else can say that? This Nobody. is kind of like, I, I, listen, I tell the people when they're messaging me and they're reaching out to me, you, which they do all the time. No, when better. they're reaching out to me, they're asking questions. They want to like hang out. Lots mm -hmm. of cameos. We'll get into those later on here in the show. But yeah. I, I, I tell people, Cam, I said, this is like a personal trainer for your hair. That's the best way to describe it. No, I get it, to. You know? it, here's yes. the deal, guys. In all honesty, yeah. Andy, you don't know shit. I know more about this. I've been through this firsthand. I've been through this for about four or five years with Hans. And it's all the same thing. It's under one umbrella, and that's hair club. But the hardest thing that I tell people, the clients, is to get your fucking ass in there. I know it's embarrassing, and I know you walk in there, there's good-looking women in there that just work there, and it's like, oh, I got to talk about my bald spot. Who gives a shit? Walk your ass in there. Feel confident. I know it's not the easiest goddamn thing to do is talk about your fucking bald spot, but you got to do it. You walk, they make you feel so comfortable. So right when you walk in there and they they put you, they sit you down and they take this little thing on your head and it's like the most comfortable, it's like, uh, and they show where you're losing your hair and you're like, and you're like, pass out. It is the easiest damn thing in the world. But just walking mm. through the door is where you got to grow the balls and be like, ah, I got to do this. I, I feel more comfortable. I, you know, I, I could do a payment plan on it. It's just going to make me walk into this next board meeting, knowing my hair is growing back. And I just got that extra, you know what, to make more mm. money, to feel more confident. That's what you do. Walk your ass through the yes. door. Yeah. Well, if there's one place you shouldn't like feel uncomfortable <laughs> if you're losing your hair is at a place where a lot of people walk into when they're losing their hair. This is no doubt. This is a this is a hair loss a solution. Baby. No, so this is this is the best place for you to go to. Full service salons, treatments, cuts, style. They can style your hair. I don't know what kind of style you're going with, Cam. What you're looking for, but uh, they I want can a help thick you out. style, Andy. Yeah, I want style. the thick yeah. style. Well, you know. So anyway, hair club. Check them out. Over twelve hundred different locations, and uh, we love having them on board. You know, I've been pounding that collagen. By the way, I just pound the collagen. Um, my French Canadian hairdresser, um, we, she's bilingual. We speak different languages and stuff like that. If she wants mm -hmm. to speak English one time, she does that. If she wants to speak French, she can do that too. Very, very close friend of mine. Yeah. We've become very good friends. That's she really cool. My... You're a very close friends with an attractive woman. How the fuck does that happen? <laughs> How are you a married man? No, 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 no. How are you a married man? And say you're best friends with another married, attractive woman. Not How best friends. How the fuck does that, even friends? What? Not best seriously, friends. Seriously, all y'all men out there, are you friends with a very attractive other woman that's married if you're in a relationship? Are you literally no. friends with another woman? No. No, no you're not, Andy. Because can I tell so you this, shut Cam? up. I don't, well, she cuts my hair, so I see her like... Uh, every do you guys every call week? each other like what do you guys do like, well you want to go to dinner tonight never never you know i i'm That's not sick. putting up with that if if are you the jealous type do you get jealous of kate no yeah. not not really i mean no now <laughs> you know i kate and i get put in weird spots all the time you're partying at the lake couples get weird da, 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 da. Okay, you, you haven't been down to the lake you haven't been down to the lake yeah well we time. well there's probably a reason for that so <laughs> even when you go places like people get weird around they touchy feely and so like, Kate can get a little riled up. I'm a very personal guy. I walk into a room and I talk to everybody. I'm very, I'm not a flirt, but I'm just very talkative. Like back in the day, I thought I was like kind of a lot more handsome and I could have a little more sweat. Well, now I'm just like the goofy, funny guy, but that still attracts people. And, and so mm. that can get into a weird thing here and there. Cause they think that you're, I treat people like we're best friends for 18 years, Andy. That's what I do when I talk to people. Like I've known them for 18 fucking years. 18. So you're, you know, can I say something real quick? Yeah. Can I say something? Well, let me just, can I no, 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 no. It's still a topic of topics. <laughs> okay, but go. I, here, here, I had a conversation with some cats. And we're talking about, like, you know, just stuff with the wife. And what do you, you know, what, what's the next, like, sexual mm -hmm. thing with the wife, right? And we all going through it. We're late 30s. Andy, you're like 50, although you look like you're 25. 50? You, you're like 42? How old are you? 
Yeah, love I don't even say I don't want to because it's gonna hurt the brand. So here's a <laughs> I don't want people to think you're young. Um when people say I look younger than you, honestly. You, goddamn right you do. Way you goddamn right you do. I give I you that every fucking I give you more compliments. You never give me compliments. Can I finish my point? I'm in better shape. Uh my my hair is better. I'm stronger. Your, I teeth am... are, your teeth are the only thing you got going. Your teeth are the only thing you got going. You got a good smile. I have a good smile. I just need to get it cleaned up a little bit. Okay. Can I finish my point, please? My arms are pretty good, too. Your arms are disgustingly small. Here's the deal. If you think that you're like, I I think my, my wife wants to be with another woman. And I think that's going to be fun and healthy for our relationship. And I, I've talked to guys like, yeah, I think that's, yeah, I, my wife's been talking about getting with another woman and I could be there. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, okay, buddy. I'm like, okay. Who, 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 who's I'm saying like, this? I'm like, okay, buddy. Now, if you're six foot four and you're fucking did it and your wife wants to get freaky and you could walk fine. But if you're selling fucking printers, okay, and your wife, you over you overscored your wife and she's talking about being with another woman, and you're like, this is cool. No, it ain't, homie. You know why? She's going to touch another beautiful woman's body. Not your little dinky fuckboy body you got. Another beautiful body. And now in the next couple weeks, she's going to be like this. Me and uh, Rosie are going to hang out again tonight. Like, okay. Oh, honey, me and Rosie are going to go on a vacation again. Okay, we're going. Me and Rosie are going down to Florida now. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's going to come back to you. She's fucking donezo with you, buddy. Listen, it might be cute fantasy. Look it up on Pornhub and get your rocks off that way. But if you want your wife to get with another woman, she ain't getting back with you, homie. Just remember that. Does Pornhub still give you like a virus on your computer? Will that like I don't know. Up, I hope mess no up fuck your not. computer? Oh God. <laughs> I think about I mean, that sometimes. I'm like, God, if somebody looked at my fucking history. <laughs> hey, remember back oh in the day, God. if you if you ever went to like a, a porn site and then all of a sudden next time you put on your computer, it's like a big like virus on your oh. computer. Andy, oh, and you Jesus. can't get rid of it. You're like, what do I do? What do oh, I do? God, uh, I've embarrassed myself so much with so many different things. I can't. I just can't even explain it to you. But not, yeah, but not anymore. Like you got a different app for it. Like it is what it is. You got to get your rocks off. I got to do what you got to do. But again, to sum up the point, tread lightly when you when you think you're cool and you want your. You, now some cases are different. Again, everybody's different. You got your. But if your if your wife's talking about being with another woman in front of you all the time. That's not a cool thing for you. That's a, okay, that's I more like admit. I got I got to cool admit uh, that we don't we don't have that problem over here. That's never come up. Yeah, yeah, and my, my wife's not that telling me that. She's not looking. To I'm go talking do to you. Like I'm talking to you. No well, shit. I don't know who you're talking. She about. might fucking I don't do know it. What's no. going on? Well, I can, I, I, look, there's a lot of guys that that talk about that. Like, oh, I think this is cool. I think my my wife went. I'm like, you're fucking crazy, dude. She's gonna turn into a lesbian, which there's nothing wrong with that. But you like look at yourself in the mirror. And then look at this beautiful girl she keeps hanging out with all the time. C- come on. Like, come on. Okay. So here's the deal. So uh, I, I asked you if you get jealous and whatever. Now, that's a whole different ballgame. Maybe yeah. even a different show. We can talk about the, the women. Really. And the women. I, I don't yeah. know what's going on. I don't know what you're talking about. See, this is why... This well, is why I, I, I. This is why I don't go out to Franklin County. This is why I don't go all the way out there. I don't, know what's going, I don't know what's going on over there. With all your track houses that you guys have going on over What's there. going on in here? I fucking golf all fucking day <laughs> in a beautiful surrounding with beautiful hillsides and big houses and wealthy people. I hang, okay, out, so I hang out with wealthy people that are new. You just act like you want to be a fancy lad so bad. I'm forced to be a fancy lad. And I don't oh even want to be one. Hey, listen. But, like, the only thing, like, I, I don't, I'm not the jealous type. I like when my wife's social. You know, sometimes, like, I'm not always in the mood to be social, and she kind of, like, makes up for it. Like, Bull. Her... No, when no, the no. fuck <laughs> are you? Get the fuck. So, so are, sometimes see, that is. What are you right now? You sometimes are, like. Sometimes I just want to be very quiet. Sometimes I want to be quiet. <laughs> but, but I think the calling and the texting and stuff like that, like, that just doesn't happen. And that would not fly. Does your girl, that does your, not. does your wife have a friend that's a guy? Legit friend. Um, one. What's his one. name? Taylor? I don't know what his name is. He doesn't live in town anymore. And, you know, listen, he's openly gay, whatever. I think. Oh, a lot well, of, there like, you go. Who cares? Okay. Yeah. No, so no, no, I think, no. I, think a, I think a lot of women have their gay no, no. friend. You know, a lot of women no. have that. Their, I'd their like one to ask, gay I'd like to ask all our, our good old boys. Listen, go, girls yeah. and boys. You yeah. guys that are married, does your wife have a guy that's friend? 
that's a friend that's married, like a legit friend. They go to coffee. They do this. Or do you have a friend that's a woman that's married that you guys like text each other? Not a work person. Like Hannah and I talked all the time because we work together. You talk to girls yeah. in Fox Sports. You got to work. We're, we're friends because we, we're work partners. But if she wasn't my work yeah. partner and I'm texting a 25 year old girl that's beautiful and like, hey, what are you doing? Let's go to like Case can be like, what the fuck are you doing? I don't text any women unless it's straight business. Never. Yeah. I don't have a friend that's a girl. What are we going to do? Go to a movie? No, I know. What do you do? I know. I know. Get the I fuck know. out of here, man. Inf- I, I don't get it. And you know what? Yeah, it's uncomfortable too because, like, it's uh, listen that that female like who you may want to be friends with, like she's in a relationship. It's like it's not fair to like whoever she's in a relationship with. Oh, I think it's I think it's disrespectful. So you listen. Sometimes you grow up with friends, like you're you know whatever. I had a tight uh, group of friends, whatever boys and girls from like high school and everything, you know. But sometimes you just gotta like. It's just the not the same. Club. Like the book club had never, boys and girls in it, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, never, never was in the book club. Okay. Oh, really? Never was in the book club. No. That's cool. Were you? <laughs> yeah, I was. And theater. <laughs> you? Oh, you were a theater kid. <laughs> yeah, I went to theater, man. Nothing wrong with that. So what anyway, a my wife's crazy friend, guy? he comes in town, and there's like four or five, six. They all worked together at Lululemon back in the day, and there's like six or seven girls. They all get together with him when he comes in town. It's like whatever, and but they all gay. work together. Yeah. You say, yeah, yeah, but yeah. that's fine. Listen, really, cool, really, really nice guy. Great guy, probably a great guy. And you know yeah. what though? But if you're a, if you're, a, imagine your girl's like, I'm hanging out with Fred again, and you're like, oh, okay. no, like that's ridiculous, Andy. Would not fly. It's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> Fred, oh, Fred's good. Or she's hanging out with a girl all the time. What if she's hanging out just like I talked about? She's hanging out with Stacy. Oh, her and Stacy are going to Florida again. Or and Stacy are going to this thing, like, like oh. on trips, like on trips and shit. Like I know, I'm like, it doesn't girl, happen. Like, it doesn't happen. Right? I, you think I could talk? Maybe with you, Andy, because Kate trusts you, and Kate trusts. Kate has her inner circle of my buddies that she trusts. If I do something with them, she's in a better state of mind. But then all the other motherfuckers, like God, like I wouldn't even be able to. I gotta tell her I'm going to the fucking gas station down the road. You know. Like and that's mm. fine. I get to do what I want. We we have a we live a great life, but if I'm going on vacation with dudes all the time, she'd be like, "What the fuck are you doing?" Yeah. This? No, no, no. Hey, um, did you get my uh, invitation? My to what? Night. My to my Halloween to party. your Halloween party? Yeah, I threw it in the fucking and, trash. Well, it's an e bite. I, yeah, I threw my phone in the trash, e-bite. and I realized I got to take it back out, so I took it back out. Okay, so <laughs> so uh, did you check? Yes. Or did you check? Well, I didn't no, waste like, my time. Where are we at with this? I, I, I where already we at fucking with this? no, no, no. I already told you. I don't need to check anything. You know I ain't coming. Kate and I spent a lot of time getting all the skeletons out of the closet, which sounds very bizarre. Got all the Halloween decorations out. We put the bats up in front of the thing. We got this guy. Got the pumpkins going. I got the twelve foot fucking skeletons coming out of the graveyard. I'm gonna start putting those bad boys out. I got the dragon in front. With Kate and I as skeletons with kings and queens with a dragon, like Game of Thrones style. So if you walk through my house, the fucking dragon's gonna gonna breathe fire on you. That's badass stuff. That's what I did yesterday. I ain't going to your stupid Halloween party. I don't go to children's parties when I don't have kids. Why would I do that? Okay, first Not to off. mention, what are we eating? Kale? Soup? Oh no, I, I have some hot cider, uh, which we typically oh, have cool. in, in uh, chili. I don't drink that. All the good Halloween goodies. Uh, Dragon is not a Halloween no, mascot. I know. It's, it's not, not. It has nothing to do with Halloween. I saw no. your Facebook stuff. I don't know, like, if you have, like, the witch's brew going on in there. I don't know what's yeah. going on. It was yeah. very Hoosier. Very Hoosier. Yeah. Um, I mean, you've got some dirty I'm living ass, in a trailer like, park. Well, I live in a trailer got, park. got some dirty-ass skeletons that you brought. I mean, I don't know what you're doing, what you have going on over there. You're one of those people. See... Halloween, listen, I love Halloween. I enjoy Halloween. And uh, I love the holidays. You know that. You know, in fact, my guy Jerry's going to be over here shortly. Is that your buddy that you go on vacations with? Oh, Jerry's, I'm ready on the schedule. He puts up my Christmas lights. And I hooked him up with a number of different people here in town. He actually does Gretzky's house. He does a lot of people's houses here around town. He's he's very, very. He probably loves you in your house. It takes two seconds compared to Gretzky's. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know what they do? 
they keep all the lights from like your house from the previous year. It's all in one bag with your name on it. It's like yeah. easy to do, dude. How much of a pain and, in the ass is that? And by the way, these dudes are cool. Cam, I will hook you up, honestly. If you want this guy to come up, and put well, Christmas you hook everybody else up and you never hook you never hook me up with dude, anything. He I will hook, hook him up several people from the blues. He does their house now. Um well, you gotta like have something like to give in return. I don't know what you're gonna like provide for him. Maybe you give him like a candy <laughs> oh, yeah. corn, like a yeah, piece sure. of candy. <laughs> I don't have anything to provide people. Like, are you kidding? Get out of here! With that. <laughs> you give him a cameo. Okay, so no, listen, no, listen. Um, his people that he has working for him, dude, they're so cool, man. And they just go around house after house after house, and they do this. But they start now because they're so busy. They start in like uh, you know in October. I mean, it's this this stuff is is up before Thanksgiving for a lot of people. Now I won't flip the switch and I won't turn the lights on until after Thanksgiving. I think you can't do that. You I can't turn the lights on until yes, Completely can't turn the lights on until after yep. Thanksgiving. Now, do you like the the colored lights? Do you like the Excuse white me? lights? I'm trying to make a decision. I may I may switch things up. Colored lights year. are kind of old school. I say you keep it all the one color and then trickle out a couple or trick out a couple other little things. I mean, our house is going to be really, we're going to have to hire some. We can't get on our fucking roof. I'll fall off that thing in two seconds. No, I'm going to, I'm going to have them come up. Yeah. You're going to have to. Can you, oh, I could, you're going to hook me up. You're going to hook yeah. your business partner up with something. Yeah. You hook up yeah. everybody else in this city. I don't ask yeah. anybody for anything, dude. <laughs> anything. No one, I don't know anybody any favors in this goddamn town, man. And I kind of like that. But fuck, man. Don't, don't be shy to take care of me once in a while. Take care I gotta of me. see if if he'll if you he may have to pay the gas money or something for him to get out man, there. I don't know. Dude, I'll, I'll take him golfing, dude. I got like fun <laughs> things actually, to do. Actually, man, he would love you, man. I this this guy. Of course yeah, he would. He he's cool as shit. So anyway, oh, he likes to have fun. Well, of course he's gonna like it. So, but okay, so I understand the holidays and the, the the Halloween going that far on Halloween with like really overdoing it. I, I don't know, man. I don't know if I can get into it that much. And I love then don't. Halloween. Then and don't. I love the Halloween. But you don't need to get you, into it. What you have going on is just a little excessive. It's just, uh, it's almost too much. We just put it out and set it up. No, 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 no. I, I, I told Kate. Where is it all going to go? Well, she, I'll, I'll send a video. I'll show you. She hooked it up all night. She just put it out and set it up and then like showed that we're going to take it and put it other places in the house. I mean, the house is gigantic, Andy. Sorry. I mean, it is. You think I live in a trailer, but I, but I don't. Now, my old house in the blue collar part of Eureka. People still have their Christmas lights up all goddamn year, to be honest with you. But oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, it's a blue so, collar part. It's a blue collar part of like you know, know almost know. Jefferson so, County. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing. I mean, I may even come out for a day or two just to check it out. Let the kids see all the uh, decorations you have going on over there. Okay? Excuse me, the kids. My kid. <laughs> My this kids, house, I'm no, no, no. Them, I'm bringing them over. No, I wouldn't do it, man. They might get into <laughs> something, dude. I got things hanging out here, you know. Like they can get, they can open a drawer up and do something, and all of a sudden, I'm in a jam. This ain't kid friendly out here, homie. This is not kid friendly. Just you put can't it away. Just, put you, it away. I do put it away. I can't lock shit. I don't have kids, kids locky stuff. What's it called? Kid safety shit. I don't have any of that shit. I got stuff laying down all over the place. Ty could come in here and be like, "Whoa, what's this? Let me." taste it or something and i'm like oh no get away from that <laughs> um so I, I i wouldn't do that dude i just wouldn't no, no kids are allowed over here unless they're outside they could hang out outside that's it they could look inside from afar mm. i know um, it's I horrible got real, I, I got a very very important cameo request over the weekend cam and i oh, uh, was did. happy to make a uh, a 16 year old very happy and he probably had the best birthday of his life. 16th birthday, that's a big deal. Did you get your license when you were 16? Did you do it right away? Did you wait? Like, wait, are you kidding? My dad got me a 5.0 Mustang, 91 hatchback, baby. Got some fat ass fuck tires on the back of that bad boy. Got me up right in my driveway, my parents' driveway, right when I turned 16. Cruise around, pick my buddies up, little hatchback 5.0, uh, 1991 red Mustang, badass. Very dangerous. Very dangerous, my dad, to give me that. You should have gave me like a fucking truck or something. I think you're like one of those spoiled kids, man. That's exactly you're, that thing cost six grand. Eater. That thing had a hundred thousand miles on it. It's a ninety one. It cost six thousand bucks. It just looked cool and it was loud. What year were you turning sixteen? What year were you? Two thousand two. Oh, okay. So it wasn't brand new. No. No, it's a ninety one. I was born in eighty four. No, two thousand. What's that would funny? Be. What's funny, Cam, is I had a Mustang too when I turned sixteen. No, I bet you did. It probably a, a and... pink one with a small engine in it. <laughs> no, it was a three fifty one, which 
it's funny because like all the, the car people, like I, I had no idea. I, listen, you know, I don't know a whole lot about cars. I mean, I like cars, but I'm not an engine guy. No, you're I'm not, not going to break down guy. the you're engine. A, you're a, uh, you got traded in 1992 and this date kind of guy and uh, you scored uh, <laughs> two hat trick goals. Eh? That's the kind of guy you are. <laughs> Hey, so when I got this car, it was a Mustang. It was actually like a classic car. It was a 1972 Mustang. So it was like 25 years old. I mean, it was so old. Had some bullet holes in it. So it was, I had a oh, lot Jesus of street cred. It was orange. And um, I remember my, my friends, like parents, like wouldn't even let them go into the car because there was no shoulder seatbelts. It just had the lap belt in the front. Oh, and they, my, my friends... They were like, you cannot go and, and oh, you can't yeah. drive with Andy. I was like, oh, my God. But this, so the car people would be like, whoa. Like, they would, like, flip out when they saw this car. And they would say, is that a Windsor or a Cleveland? Is that a 351? They pop the hood back. Dude, you got a 351 in here. I was like, really? I had no Who idea. Gave you that? How much was that? Who gave you that? Uh, my mom got it for me. And it was honestly, like, less than a 1000 bucks, I think. I mean, this whole thing just does not make any fucking sense no, at all, dude. You are so out of your, are you are you did you turn into a, a, a habitual liar? Have no, you turned into one? I have are pictures. you turning into me somehow? No, seriously. No, I, I get a Mustang, dude. you got a Mustang. This that, that everything is turning into I what swear. the fuck I do. Hey, I don't I think will, you're living double lives here, no, man. This is people very weird. Listening, people listening will hundred percent confirm this. For a thousand bucks. It was like a cam. It had like holes in it and it was rusted out. It was not. So my mom had a friend who owned this car and they like basically like hooked up my mom, or whatever. And like, charity, and then I sold a charity it. case. You're a charity. And case. then I, I sold it for like 500 bucks. Now, back then, let me just say this back in like the 90s and whatever, like you could get a piece of shit car for under a thousand bucks. You probably still can, but probably not as, you know, you, you could. No, like, you yeah, you could. Well, now, right now, maybe now you can't. But like back then, you really could for like twelve hundred, fifteen hundred, two thousand bucks. Whatever. Still you can get cheap a, back then, dude. That's a cheap was, car back. then. It was. So this car, anyway. So I didn't have it very long. I don't even know if it would pass inspect inspection or whatever. No. Nope. I actually, <laughs> I actually broke my ankle, Cam, like oh, two weeks God. after my sixteenth birthday playing football. <laughs> oh, I bet. Okay. okay. You're running somebody down, ankle, I'm sure. And I had to drive that thing with my left foot for like the first like several months. Okay. So I had to do that. So, um, yeah, but this like Mustang, man. So I used to race people back in the day because like, they were like, dude, you got a 351. We got a race. And I would never, ever lose. And I wasn't even the car guy. Like, I, these, like these redneck You have a time time out. Time out. Time want to race me and you I would win a, the races. You're a habitual. Stop it. Habitual. Stop now. You didn't win True. any fucking race with a thousand hour car with your fucking motor mount probably popping off that goddamn thing. Your transmission's fucked up. You got bullet holes and you're beating. Who, who, who are you racing? A Cutlass Sierra on Lindbergh Boulevard? Get out of here with that. No, man. There my Mustang these, uh... was fast and it certainly wasn't the fastest car in a fucking school by any means. Well, mine was. It was a classic car. And there were these guys that would like hang out at like a 7 Eleven, like, you know, the car people with their hoods pop yeah. like all night i know long. i did that back in the day i did it. all well i well i didn't and that wasn't me oh, yeah. but you know but i was but like i would roll up Hang there, with the girls maybe, you know and then like with my car they'd be like whoa so and then somebody would like all you know challenge me to a race mm -hmm. and i'd be like let's do it dude and i never okay. lost that race and you, ever right. and you got the girl so, and what about your boat <laughs> andy how was your boat back in the day when you got your boat and you raced everybody down to lake of the ozarks and well the i wanted to tell you uh with the Robert bushes thomas Robert Thomas, who just signed his new contract extension. I had him on the uh, radio show the other day. And um, first off, he looks fucking great right now. He looks good, way. man. I mean, all you like Canadian, like you guys know who Robert Thomas is, won the World Juniors in Canada, played for London, Memorial Cup, all that stuff. Great guy. I, I know all you like fantasy hockey people, like I don't play fantasy hockey, but uh, it's, it's all good for those of you who do. You might want to get him on your team. Like he looks really, really good. I feel like this is going to be a bust out year for him. So he just signs a two year bridge deal, right? A little contract extension. And uh, I asked him. I said, you know, what do you want to do with your uh, with your new contract? What do you want to buy? And he wants to buy a boat. That's what well, he's looking at. I know. Well, okay. I need. I, t I saw him the other day at the party. Um, he didn't bring that up, and I'm kind of mad that he didn't. I don't want him to make any decisions until he talks to me. Don't do any knee jerk reaction. Certainly don't talk to your stupid ass when it comes to boats because you're going to be like, I gave him, well, I told the, him. I get the Bayliner. 
No, I sent him a picture. Bayliner is like the worst boat brand you can get. Bayliner is like real cheap. I, I had a joint uh, text going on with me, Robert, and CJ, like just kind of going over some things. So I, I think that 36 foot uh, Chris Craft that I have and that uh, CJ drove for me, uh, I thought that'd be a perfect, perfect uh, boat for, for Robert for when you. he goes up to the cottage in the summer. No, men, men drive their own fucking boat, Andy. That's what men do. <laughs> they drive their own boat. You don't. You, you, have, you didn't fucking rent a yacht, dude. Okay, you rented a goddamn boat, and you had some creepo fucking creep your fucking family out while he's got his glasses on, driving you around, owning your life, hitting waves, and knocking ties fucking. Oh my god! Head fucking. You know, we hit, almost we, over we, fucking ten. We almost exited the boat with some of these waves. I know. Now, I know. now, I know what about what about if you have party favors and stuff like that? Like, how do you handle the boat? Well, you drive the that's, boat. That's a different. No, that's a good question. That's a good question. Depends on what kind of party favorites you're talking. Like, what are you getting down with it? You got a little vape pen you're fucking hitting that? You're fucking driving a boat, homie. Okay. You hit a little vape. But if you're fucking getting down with it and your mind's not there, you need somebody else. But that's when you fucking chill. You, you do that you on the dock, homie. Go find a cool little cove and get your mind right and then putt back or whatever. I get what you're saying when it comes to that, but you weren't fucking party favoring it up. Who are you kidding? You're your fucking family. You take care of your own thing whenever you get a boat like that. But if you're partying, partying, that's a different story, man. That's a good okay. question. Okay. I get Here's a good question. You never yeah, want to bring because... anything on a boat anyway. By no, the way. but Don't listen. search that boat so fucking fast. You can only hide so many things unless you dump it out. Really? We've done that yeah. before. Well, because the, but, but like, even, like if, even if the alcohol is flowing, you just got to be careful, dude. You got to be careful. And there's other oh, boat people right. out there, too. And there's so, a lot of dipshits. Yep. When the wife and I take the kids out on the boat for the, it's like our party. They're there, too. But like we're having, uh, we're getting our minds right and we're having fun. Drive your own boat, Andy. Like, come on. Well, you CJ's like, you're, you're, for that. like you're fucking party favoring it up. Like you're fucking, you're going to goddamn Hawkinsaw in Vegas, fucking rolling your fucking brains out. You ain't doing that. What's Hawkinsaw? You, it's a what is that? Uh, Hawkinsaw. It's like a it's a big bar in Vegas. It's just a oh, waste really? of money. Yeah. Uh, I've never been to Hawkinsaw. Yeah, no shit, you didn't, because it probably cost you a shit ton of money to get in there. I got invited. You, or to yeah, Vegas. no cool people. I got invited to Vegas the other day for uh november 20th or october 20th i forgot which date it was do you want to come you should come dude kate can come is it a private jet i only fight private these days private private plane all right i gotta pitch in on that are you in (laughs) no you don't have to pitch in if you're flying a private jet you don't let your buddies pitch in okay just so you know well you know i heard some people the other day talking about like flying to like uh like overseas, Ireland, Scotland, like whatever, and they were like, "Well, why don't we just all just get a private plane?" No, that costs way money. too. No, 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 no. I mean, you, you better get a that. big plane. You got better get a big plane. Let me man. explain how it goes with this. You don't fly fucking overseas on a private jet unless you have a fuck ton of money, homie. You, you don't have enough no, gas to, to me. get there. Too. Exactly, it costs way too much money. So what you do is you just fly commercially, but you go and pay for the nice, expensive, which costs a shit ton, but not as much of a private jet. Wait the f- ten hours over. So you pay for a good seat, luxury seat, luxury pass, luxury little area where you could have a cocktail when no one else bugs you. Like, that's about as nice as you can get as far as commercial is concerned. But if you want to go overseas with a private jet, boy, that's a fuck ton of money. Mm. Even the it's big, called, big dogs uh, don't do that. You mean like first class, first class, yeah. Yeah, like there's just different There's different options you could have where you could just have your own seat, lounge up, have a privacy thing. Remember, remember when we yes. flew to Sweden in 08 with the Blues? We had a cool – all the guys were in this, like, little area where you had your own little thing where you just put put your privacy thing up. You had your own thing, blah, 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 blah. You could fuck off all you want. It's kind of really, really nice, and that's very expensive. But, again, flying fucking private, Did you man. play play in either of those two games over there? No, I did not. You I didn't? Played the, I played – no, no. Really? Because it was the first two it's games been of the fucking season. 10 grand in six days. I want to say – you guys would have played maybe one or two exhibition games over there too, right? I don't no? think we did. I think we just played two games in practice against man, the Red Wings. Against and then the Red we, Wings. Um, yeah, and we beat them twice. So here's this funny we, part. Yes, you did. But here, and the Red you. Wings were like the Red Wings at the time. Andy, they loaded. were un- goddamn believable. Yeah, so we go to yeah. Stockholm, Sweden, in 2008. This was still with Andy Murray and um, who's a GM? J- Larry JD Plum. and those guys. Yeah, no, nah, this was, was like, this was Larry. JD- just gotten here though as but this was still new ownership and all that no no but this was still not doug's regime right like we're right. Oh, yeah no it was like, larry okay. Clow, yeah right my point i love larry 
goddamn awesome guy, nicest guy in the world. Love him to death. I know you do too, and you respect him. He helped me. Anyway, we were partying, dude. I spent 10,000 bucks in about five or six days just by Derek Armstrong and myself. We're sitting games out. Oh my God, we partied all night. We beat the we beat Red Wings twice in a row. Then Matt Sundin <laughs> hooked us up with a club, comes in there, and his wife's sister was in there, and we're all partying. And I, I, God, I think it was his wife's sister or something right there. And I remember taking this big champagne bottle and we're like, ah, drinking like we won the Stanley Cup. And I go, here you go. And she takes it and I, I take it and I get bumped and I take that thing and I hit this girl's tooth and knock her fucking tooth out. Oh my God. Oh, Jesus. Oh my God. You knocked her tooth out with a champagne oh, God. bottle? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. She Hold still on. looked really good looking, though. I'm oh, just yeah. saying, poor girl. Fucking chipped her fucking teeth. She's like, oh, I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm like, eh, what do we do? Eh, we want to make out or something? Hold she didn't want to do that. The whole, was the whole team there or just you and Oh, and, uh, fuck. Yeah, all the boys were there. Oh, yeah. Everybody. And you're knocking a tooth out. I didn't mean to, that's, damn it. I'm terrible. trying to help the poor Did you woman. help her? Did you help her? Oh, she was... I'm like, Ugh. and then I'm like, okay. <laughs> <What? laughs> oh, the bottle was huge. And I'm trying to help this poor woman. I'm trying to get her drunk. She didn't want to hold the goddamn thing. She probably would have broke her neck if she would have held it. So I held it for her. Somebody bumped into me and I chipped her fucking dude. How does Sundin help you guys? I don't get that. I, he I like talked to Steiner or something like that. Yeah, Steeny Weenie knew him. Fuck, he doesn't care. Like he's fucking awesome. He's like, yeah, we'll hook you up with this. Here's da, 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 da. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. Guy so party. All had, my buddies so guys, were in town, by the way. All my buddies. What do you mean? In town. They came to Sweden. My motherfucking buddies like from who? Missouri, like St. Louis, Travis, buddies? and all my buddies. No, they all yes, came there. They flew to Germany, took a fucking bus. We partied for six nights straight. I spent so much motherfucking money. I couldn't even tell you how much money. I, I, Did they thousands. stay in the same hotel or no? No, the they stayed in different hotel. one, but we met up every second. I gave them tickets. I gave them, I hooked them all up, dude. Spent so much fucking money. I didn't give a shit. Didn't play a fucking one shift, but had one of the best times ever, man. <laughs> uh, you knocked that Derek Armstrong, let me give you a, Derek, you were, I, I know you're a good guy, but fuck were you annoying at times. <laughs> I'm trying to wheel girls. I was single at the time. I'm trying to wheel everything in sight. I'm trying to talk to these six foot blondes everywhere. Fucking Derek Armstrong. I don't give a fuck if he's listening or not. He was so out of control. He was so embarrassing. Great guy. But he'd sit there and we're like talking to these hot, oh my God. And I'm like, hi, I have a, a farm in the middle of Missouri with unicorns and butterflies. And they're like, yeah, go. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Then fucking fuck boy Derek Armstrong takes a bunch of fries, puts it in his hat, puts ketchup in it. And then puts it on his head like me, 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 and then eating it like a goddamn child. Oh and my these god! Girl, these girls French fries like, in his hat in on his, top of his head. And all y'all know who is listening right now. And he could use a little hair club too, right? You know, I well, don't remember. That. I don't even remember what he fucking looks like. I don't. I don't even remember what he looks like. But I, I remember he the was girls a great like, dude. First of all, Derek guy. Armstrong, and then he went on. and He was like coaching a like a, a team a in Colorado. I Andy, think. Andy, Colorado I, I know he's good. Everybody knows he's a good guy. Doesn't matter. Everybody knows I have to beak him on this. It was yeah. so I've never seen, and I'm a bizarre dude. But when it comes to like wheeling chicks, like you gotta be like, I'm like, hey, and yeah, I'm joking about having unicorns and shit, but whatever. I have stallions at home. No, I don't. I live in a blue collar apartment, a little house next to my parents. Like I'm a fucking loser. Were you but wearing I, your I, Hugo Boss shirt? Oh, I was yeah. wearing a motherfucking <laughs> shit. Like, what's up, baby? And then Derek Armstrong, who looked like such a Hoosier. He's got like cut pants. Like he just didn't give a fuck. And he's taking fries and grease is going down his fucking forehead. And I'm like, what are you? What the fuck are you, alien? Stop it. These girls are freaked out. He would do crazy shit like that. I never understood it, man. Fries in his hat with ketchup and then take his hat off like, and eat it in front of people. Mm. If anybody else play with him, send the comments below. You guys know exactly what I'm talking Great guy. Great guy. Yeah. Not the best wheeling partner when it comes to that. I like the silent type that are handsome. I wonder if Jake Allen played those games over in Sweden. I'm trying to think. Might have been Yarrow. No, he might wasn't there. Yarrow. No, Yarrow, was Yarrow and fucking Mace or, or Yarrow and somebody. Yeah, Jake yeah, had been Mace. That was 08, homie. That was 08. Well, he wasn't that far off. It was way before him. Okay. Yeah. Way before. What a great Sweden. time. It was so did funny. You play with, hey. Did you play with Jake or no? No. 
No, I didn't. No, you didn't. So, okay. I, uh, no. So anyway, one art story with that, like, uh, you know, Andy Murray, who we love. And he, you know, he oh, was yeah. annoying in his own way. No, we're, listen, I just we'll talked to him. Ass, we're going to have him on here shortly. Yeah. Cool. I, Andy's cool. And we had a little thing. <laughs> what the fuck done there? But uh, he would have a scavenger hunt for us. <laughs> scavenger hunt. Where we had to walk everywhere in Stockholm, right? You can't get a cab. You're not allowed. to scavenger hunt. And Walt, <laughs> Walt, so, God, was he just. I don't give a motherfuck mode, but I love my team kind Wasn't of thing. Wasn't Korea on the team too? Paulie Korea, awesomest guy. So nice, dude. So funny. Got chirped by everyone. Didn't give up. He was just awesome. Love Paulie. He, he's being a pussy, by the way, too. He needs to come on our goddamn podcast. Paulie, no, I know you're Paulie surfing with, with fucking Troy Palomam, you and all them out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Palomalu. Don't, don't, Palomalu. I know you're doing your thing, but I'm your boy. Come on, come on on the on the fucking pod, and let's. All we're doing is going to pump your goddamn tires up anyway. But we did a scavenger hunt, and he, and and he's like, uh, our uh, Andy Murray's like, nobody walk, you or nobody take a cab, walk. Everybody's walking, and the first thing Walt does right when we come out, he goes, "What the fuck are we doing?" Gets right into a cab, goes right to all the, the strategies, beats everybody in like an hour, comes back, <laughs> comes back in, <laughs> in a cab, and he's flipping us all. We're all like sprinting so we can get this goddamn thing over with so we can go party. And we're sprinting to get this shit done. And Walt's literally in a cab, flipping us off with, like, fuck yo, goes and picks up that thing, goes and picks up that thing. Oh, it's a funny. And then we all went to the bar afterwards. It's a, he, it's just what Andy Murray spent all this time setting it up, and Walt just gets in the cab and goes, duh, 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 done. Mm. Oh, I love it. He didn't get I, rem- it. I remember when uh, Panger had just gotten hired to St. Louis, actually. Yep. That was like his first game. He was games. great, yeah. Yep. And he actually, they actually had him do the game. It was like they had the Red Wings play by play guy, and then Panger was the color guy. So they had a play by play guy and like two people from the bro- on the broadcast, one from each team. So John Kelly didn't go on a trip, I remember, because I was in a fashion show, and John Kelly was in the fashion show. How did fashion you guys, show go? When you guys were in Sweden, right before the game, we did a did fashion show. Did they lose money, like, that company? At like a mall or something. <laughs> did that, that company lose money when you were walking out there like, these clothes are too big on me. And everybody's like, oh, that looks like shit. I'm not buying this product. <laughs> Hmm. Wearing like tuxedos and stuff. Is that what you did? Hey, um, That's a pain. Yes, yeah. I know. I know. I think I still have it. Oh, I, I, I still we, fitting we got, it. You probably still <laughs> fitting it. Probably so. All right. So the uh, the Blues made a trade over the weekend. Let me just say this real quick about Zach Sanford, real quick, because Ottawa. We had some fans from Ottawa. You're getting the guy in Zach Sanford, and I know he took like a little bit of like uh, heat at times from the fan base. You know, he was a guy who like whose personality cam isn't like, you know. Listen, this guy cares, but you know how some people's personalities, like, they don't have that angry face. They're just not, they don't have, like, that, that you know, intense look that some of the fans need to see, like, to be, conf- you know, for confirmation that they truly care. You know, it's like, not everybody likes that. Some people are just mellow, man. He kind of falls in that category. He does, dude. No doubt. He falls in that category, you know? It's like the Eli Manning, you know? It's like back, you know, Eli was just kind of like, you know. But, well, yeah, you know, so let me say, so it's six foot four. He's got hands. Uh, I would imagine Ottawa is going to flip him at some point during the season because he's going to be a UFA next year unless they want to give him some money. And so it'll be interesting to see how they handle it. I mean, do they have like, like what's the plan is the plan is to give him a, a real opportunity to, to, to kind of show like what he can, what he can do. Like, is there an opportunity for him to get on a second power play? I mean, where, in reality, you look at his point production, both in junior, also in the American Hockey League, like that's where he gets a lot of his offensive production, right? On the power play, which most of these guys do when they're playing junior. All these guys in the NHL were all on the power play. But even in the American Hockey League, you know, he's a guy who's got great vision, great hands, great passing abilities, more of a playmaker than a scorer, you know. So I'll uh, just be curious, Cam, what the plan is. I, I, I think I think he's under the impression that he's going to get a real opportunity to play some games and get to prove that he belongs in the National Hockey League. And I think we're all eager to see what he does with this, you know, clean slate. It's a uh, change of scenery and it's an opportunity for him to come home. This is huge for his family, right? Yeah. The mom's all excited. The sister's excited. His dad yeah. played here. His dad was a, a awesome really, fan. really oh. good NHL player, man. People Big don't time. realize all-star defenseman had a huge Underrated. shot. Great on the power play. Underrated. Career cut short a little bit because of injury. Um, yep. So this is, this, is, this is big for like a lot of people here in St. Louis. But at the end of the day, 
you know, he's coming to a team that's expecting to compete for a Stanley Cup, and he's going to have to find Andy, a role. At the end of the day, he's just another dude. At the end of the day, he's just another dude on a loaded fucking lineup, man. So he's got to find his way on this lineup one way or the other. Whether it's a fourth line making draws, heavy in the D zone, getting pucks out, being reliable, talk. Chief, I want a penalty kill. I, I just like I'm good, rely, and then you mix your way into your skill, then you get comfortable, and you could you could probably bump some guys up and down the lineup or whatever the case is because you're playing hard, but you're defensive minded mm-hmm. first. Like you can't just go in there and think that you're gonna just get thrown in a power play with this loaded ass team, man. You didn't do it in Ottawa. Like you're not gonna you're not gonna crack this lineup unless you you could play in any kind of situation, especially mm-hmm. to start. And if you think that they're gonna give them every opportunity, I mean, I don't know. I who are they well, going to bump off? There's 15 fucking centers on that goddamn team. You got I a bunch know. of young kids you still got. You got, where's Clem Cosson? Where, 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 like all these kids are they're sticking the same thing with. So you're in the well, mix. Plus, yeah, cosson has got to figure it out too, though, man. All I these know. guys do. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. he, he, was, he was just okay in the first game. He was better later in the game notice. than he was earlier in the game. Um, but, you know, and listen, the biggest knock on Logan Brown since he's turned pro has been pace. And can he play at the necessary pace? I think that's anybody yeah. who's tried to be, uh, you know, and I don't want to say negative or try to dissect his game or whatever, but that's that's the one thing they talk about is pace of play. Can he play at the necessary pace? So, listen, I'm just like everybody else. A lot of people, and probably including yourself, can you guys haven't seen Logan Brown play a game in how long, right? Yeah. When's the last time you saw Logan Brown play? When you broke your finger. You know? You know, <laughs> we're playing in the yeah, summer maybe, league. Maybe, maybe. Ah, I'll give you, so, I'll give Andy a little shout out for being tough real quick. I, 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 I had these uh, skates in, in in St. Louis when I was really skating hard, like a couple of years ago. I had a Logie and all the guys out. Andy was skating with all of us, and we're playing at such a high level. It was so funny, and we're so into it because we're like a championship game. Andy takes a slap shot from Matt Lashoff, hits his finger in front of the net, breaks his finger in fifty fucking places, and I chirp Andy a lot. He played 40 more minutes and didn't even realize it was broken and scored a goal. No, I knew I was it was on the broken. Ice. I knew it was broken. I was on the ice when you scored a goal too. And, I, and then I realized your finger was broken after you, I was dash one. And then I was like uh, very depressed for like two weeks. But then I realized I like Andy and I have to compliment him on this because you were pretty <laughs> tough in that situation. Well, I had to, I had to play through it. It felt like, you know, like, um, like my hand was on the shaft of the stick. Okay, you don't need to explain it that okay. much. I know. And it your fucking it hand. felt yeah, like da, 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 someone da, da. took Jesus. a a, a hammer, a hammer to my finger. I know how it feels. Just people who don't know Matt Lashoff, he was a former first round pick. He can shoot the puck. Great right? guy, model, and can play the yeah. guitar. <laughs> he can <laughs> awesome shoot. Guy. So anyway, listen, Logan's here. Uh, he's going to get an opportunity. Listen, the rea- here's how I'm going to put it in a nutshell. He will have an opportunity. In a new with a new team, new organization, to prove that that he's what a lot of people thought he would be when he was drafted, and that he can play at a high level and he can help this team win games. Can and I say something controversial? Day, it's up to him. Can up I say to him to go out there and prove that. And I'm looking forward to watching him play and seeing what he truly brings to the table for this team. I love I love that family. Yeah, but I'm going to say one thing. Brownie needs to step away from this a little bit. Brownie, Jeff Brown, needs to be Logie's dad, not his coach right now, in my opinion. And Brownie's been coaching him his whole fucking life, and he's still doing it kind of. And, you know, you got two different guys telling you this, that. I think, and I didn't think I told him this in the locker room. We just had a fancy guy go, just be his dad. Enjoy it. Just enjoy it. Let Logie flow around with fucking no bucket on a warm-up with the Blues jersey on. Enjoy it. Stop, don't critique it. Let Baruby take care of it. Let Stevie Ott and the guys tell him everything he needs to know. Just fucking be – just be a dad. Be a dad yeah. that fucking pumps him up and builds his confidence up. I know, and I think uh, yeah, I love Brownie, I think, man. But I, you know. I, I think I think you know ever ever since Logan has become an NHL player, right? I mean, they're not in the same town. He's not watching every practice, whatever. I, I think you see more of that. But it's no different than any other. Like any exactly right, Andy. Listen, You're exactly all right. These on other, that. All these other, all these other kids. I mean, you don't think Keith Kachuk is like in Brady and Matthew's ear all the time? I mean, he absolutely well, it's is. working. And, oh, that one's and a lot of and, and a lot of these, yeah. So a lot of these guys, listen, it, it's so much easier said than done. Because I, I think about that even with my kid, who's five years old, he's just getting started. I and know. like yes, I get you. yesterday. You know, it's like how hard can you be on them? Like you want them to like love the game. I know. You get caught up in the moment. You get caught up. They're so young. 
You know what I mean? Like Can I yesterday, tell you what they want? Hold on. We're pre- yeah, because I'm, I'm curious to get your take on this. You know? Yesterday, it's um, 7.30 a.m. practice. You know, oh, it's a yeah. Sunday. It's a yeah. Sunday. So I'm getting them out of bed at like 6.15 in the morning. You That's, know okay. Like, That's okay. That's okay. It's okay. So we do that, you know, whatever. He was tired. I knew it wasn't going to be a good skate for him. He wasn't loving the idea of going oh, to yeah. you know, practice the day before. He's got to skate again today, three days in a row, whatever. It's all good. But and he had soccer again yesterday, man. I mean, you get you, you lose sight of how young they are. And because of people like Logan Brown, because of people like Matthew Kachuk, and even to a lesser extent, people like you, whatever, these guys out of St. Louis who have made it to the NHL, there's so much pressure. And I, I, I see a lot of parents like at a younger age, it's like, it's their, everything's about the NHL. Everything's about making it. And, yeah. and so, and I think don't lose sight of the process. You want the process to still be fun. And I'm trying to remind myself there that it at is, the Andy. same time, because there it is. when they get to 13 and 14, when you truly know if they have potential, yeah. and I'm not saying even at 13 and 14, you know, for sure. You'll know some. You'll they're playing something. for a while. You'll, you'll, know, you'll, know, for, you'll yep. know something. If they have potential yep. and whatever, you're not going to look back at like what happened when they were five. Mm. Well, it's important. It's not as important as you think it five is. Five years old. When they, yeah, when they are five. It's not. You know what I'm saying? You even so, know what hockey I, was at five. So you see a lot of the parents, they're so into it. There's a lot of like competition you feel like amongst the parents. There it is too, Andy. And it's yep. just like, man, and I, I think a lot of it has to do with the success of all these kids that have come out of St. Louis in recent years. And now it's Something like, everyone wants to be the next one, you know? I'm sorry I made it. I'm sorry I paved the path for all y'all psycho fucking parents out there. Here's how I look at it, Andy. Okay, here's how I look at it. Everybody has their own style with their kids. But when they, the bottom line is, if you're too hard on them, they're going to rebel against you and they're not going to like you. Now they fucking hate their coach in football. They hate their teacher. And now they hate their fucking dad because their dad's their fucking coach and their teacher and fucking everything. And he disciplines them. So it's like my dad, and I always bring my dad in this. He was my friend. He was my dad, but he was my pump up, like my energy source, like my everything. And I loved him. And I loved after I played a game, I'm like, I knew I did it. And I go and I just look at it and he gave me that wink and everybody's talking to him. Like it just had a, I played for him. But if he was not like that, then I'd rebel against him. And he's like, fuck, my dad's here. Oh, God. If my dad's here, I'm like this. <gasps> I'm going to motherfuck everybody up. Like, I'd be so excited. Like, my God, my dad. But a lot of these kids, man, their dads are there like, oh, what am my dad thinking? What's he thinking? What's he? How about just be a dad and love your kid and let everything else set, set into play? You could teach them little things. But if you're hard on them, the coach is hard on them, the teacher's hard on them, this is hard on them, this girlfriend's hard What the fuck? Where's his escape? He's going to rebel against all you. Dads, you need to have a relationship with your kid, not just fucking business shit. Like, I love you. I'm watching you. You have to figure that on, uh, out on your own, all you dads out there. You can't have 50 fucking coaches. He has to have a fucking shoulder to fucking lean on. And it needs to be you, dads. Yeah, no, I think that's well said. I go through that with my daughter too, man, because like I'm not like a soccer aficionado, but I'm there to pump her up and obviously give her, encourage her and give her confidence. She but I get so you? caught up in the games. Well, no, but I get so caught up in that she's always looking over. But I get That's so caught I mean. up in the games. You just you know her potential, yep, and you want her to reach that maximum potential. You want her to be like great every game, and it's just not the real. It's just it's not, not the real. Yeah, but they, you know? here's you want Chloe to want you there. Okay, That's mm-hmm. it. You want yeah. your kid to see you and your wife when you walk into that rink and you're like, where's my dad? Where's my dad? There he is. Oh, yeah. Somebody's motherfucking getting it now. That's what you want. Not like, oh, God, my dad's here. Yeah, he's going to. Mm-hmm. Like, who? Oh, God, how, how unhealthy is that? Like, all you guys just think about that. They got the they got the coach. They got their teacher. They got every all the shit. And then now you're adding on to that, which most of you don't even know what the fuck you're talking about anyway. How about you support, support? If he doesn't try or she doesn't try hard, now you sit him down. But if they're busting their ass, this ain't coming. Now you you spring on all these other little options because the coach isn't good because you don't know fuck. You just have to be a supporting cast, man. You have to, kid has to have that. Mm -hmm. And it's the best case scenario when it's your your mom and your dad and they could always come home and you know when they're wrong and you know when they're right, but you're a shoulder to cry on without being, without babying them. 
always mm-hmm. a balance. I know it's hard to explain. Well, but yeah, God, no, damn, it is. Man. It is. I mean, it's just like hockey's gotten so big and whatever. It's like kids are being evaluated at five years old, and it's like you know, I you know. Just, you just, I you just, just want to like you want to be in the moment. You want to just enjoy the moment, enjoy the process. Yeah. Don't make the process you know, so difficult and, and, and just like, be happy. You know you what I mean? Your kid don't want you there, dude. You yeah. want your kid yeah. to want you there. And then he gets excited that your fucking dad's when Ty sees you at the rink, you want that just you and him, that little look mm-hmm. where he's skating around twirling the stick and he looks at you like, daddy, I got this today. Mm-hmm. And you give him a little thumbs up, man. Like that's a connect. No, like, let's go. Like, yeah, sometimes that's good, but, for the most part, like, we're, I'm, I love you, but like, I love you. Go, you're mm-hmm. the best, you know, like pump them up, but don't kiss his ass. There's always a balance, dude. There's a balance with everything. Motherfucker. Some of you fucking parents. Don't get, don't get me round up again. What are you doing, Jacob? Jacob. J- Shut up. <laughs> fucking idiot. Jacob. Jesus. Jacob. Oh, hey, fuck you. Speaking of Jacob, Jake yeah. uh, Allen is on yeah, this yeah. edition of the Chemistry Podcast, man. Great conversation with this guy who... The reality is, I mean, I know he didn't play a playoff game last year for uh, Montreal because he had Carey Price and all that. But, I mean, they don't make the playoffs without Jake Allen. He was a huge story up in Canada in the Canadian division last year. Big story the year before here in St. Louis. I mean, played some of his best hockey the year before. Had some great moments here, but also had some, like, struggles. Had some real ups and downs when he was playing goaltender here in St. Louis. That position is so mental. Like, it's just, I, I couldn't imagine, like, dealing with that Every single day, you're kind of on an island by yourself. People, you know, feel like they can just throw so many daggers and put so much heat on the goaltending. Yeah. And when you're playing well, man, you're on top of the world. But when you're struggling, I can only imagine that that feeling of isolation. So people are going to love this conversation with Jake the Snake. He is a great guy, great person, great does guy. a ton of, ton of oh, charity work. Great and guy. he's got unbelievable goaltending skill like you talk about skill at like other positions this guy is truly skilled at the goaltending position just the way he moves around in the crease leaves the net handles the puck his passing ability stick handling ability plus he's uh he can make some great saves and he's obviously had a nice career so people will like this conversation coming up with jake the snake baby yeah yeah jakey and not to mention we said this to him too all the shit that went down getting his job taken away from him Oh, you know, getting ripped on. You know, he just kind of was a whipping boy for a little bit there. And he just played it cool, man. He was nice. So all the guys, Andy, we evaluate everybody. And you know how we do it, dude. Like, I could just tell. I walk in our locker room. He was, just gets done getting bagged. Bennington's getting all the attention. Benner's doing this. He's loud. He's everybody. Benner, Benner, Benner. And Jakey gets everything stolen away from him, which rightfully so, man. That's the way yeah. it is. It's business. And all of a sudden, he still comes in that locker room with a smile on his face. He talks to everybody. Yeah. He does every. He played it so goddamn professionally. He's such a good yeah. guy. Everybody That's loves him. That's the key word, man. This guy is an absolute pro. Pro. Absolute pro. pro. Oh, Lord. And I bet Love you, him. listen, one day we're going to get Kerry Price on here. I bet you, man, he loves He'll see. It. It's probably his favorite partner he's ever had, man. And you know, you know, when Jakey Allen comes back to St. Louis, he'll get a fucking standing out. The people will oh, yeah. love him here. He busted yeah. his fucking ass. I love you, Jakey. Oh, yeah. Jakey, yeah. great yeah. guy. Yeah. The way he handled himself that year, they won the cup yeah. too, man. So great anyway, stuff. all right. The Camister podcast brought to you by Hair Club is also presented by CarShield and CarShield.com. 800 857 2481, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 800 yeah, yeah, yeah. 857 2481. Check it out. And uh, get that membership now. You can get a long-term one or a short-term membership, whatever is the best fit for you. And it's like individual fit. You know, like whatever your needs are, man, that's what you do. And uh, Car Shield will save you thousands and thousands of dollars. Cam, you know that. You never know no, if something's going to go down in your car. But you had to go down. You embarrassed the entire company. I know. That's what you did. You embarrassed Bad. all of us. You embarrassed all of us. <laughs> <when> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I don't even like you revisiting it because it's still embarrassing. It's very embarrassing. Yep. They were tri- uh, I was everybody thought I was cool until my car didn't yeah. start. And until like, oh, then, a scumbag. You're not cool anymore. Like, wow, yeah. are you guys not making any money on the That's podcast? what I thought. They, they thought I was a poor like, they were throwing me change. Like, here you go, sir. Oh <laughs> like, God, do you fuck. not have a car that works? Like, what? Didn't you play yeah. in the show? Like, you don't you have a car that or... runs. Do you yeah, spend that much money, Cam? I know. Yes, so I that's did. That's what happens. That's what happens. Uh, 800-857-2481. So here's how it works. If something goes down in your car, it could be a starter, alternator, engine, computer, whatever it is. We're talking thousands and thousands of dollars. I mean, thousands and thousands of dollars. 
and uh, it could be coming out of your pocket. But if you have car shield, you have that protection, baby. So make sure you're protected. Use that promo code CAM. You're going to save 10% too. So you'll save a little bit of money. Again, car shield, carshield.com brings us the Cam and Strict podcast presented by Hair Club. Of course, our friends over there at Daredevil Hockey, uh, you talk about the ultimate protection. They protect you too. I get parents who say, wow, is that the stuff you talk about on the podcast? Well, it sure is. And I go out there with confidence with my kids on the ice because I know he's protected. I don't have to worry about the trip to the emergency room, knock on wood, because of skate lacerations. Yeah. I mean, skate lacerations are very serious. It's the number one cause of emergency room visits among youth hockey players because skates are sharp and your skin, it makes contact with – how does that work, Cam? If the, if, the, if the skate blade makes contact with the skin, what can happen? You get the shit cut out of you, dude, and you'll bleed out. Yes. yes. You'll bleed out, but, and you don't even know but, you're cut. But if you're uh, protected with car, with uh, with uh, Daredevil Hockey, obviously. You live. You, you, you live. You live. You're, you you live. live. How's that? Yeah. You live instead of bleeding out. Mm. You live, which is always cool because you want to live. I don't like to it's bleed out. Live. Okay. I don't like to bleed out. Ooh. Have you ever bled out? Yeah, 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 I have. Did you? Mm-hmm. And you I, I, got, I got cut on I me. Mean, I got cut all over the goddamn place. But yeah, oh, Cam, I, I got uh, skated over by the linesman. Uh, sure it was, you did. It was, it was the drop of the puck for the first period. And uh, I was lined up at right wing, um, which is my position, playing right wing. And the linesman just, uh, after he dropped the puck, Cam, you know, he drops it and then he starts skating backwards to get out of the way. Yeah. I got tripped right off the draw at the faceoff, right off the draw. I got tripped by the opposing left winger. I'm right winger, so the other team's left. He trips me. I'm on the ice. The 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 the, the referee who drops the puck. Feed the story. Ice, he's he's going backwards. He steps on my arm, mm-hmm. and I'm bleeding like I'm. And I didn't have I didn't have any daredevil oh, hockey oh. back then, you know. So yeah. So now. I make sure my kid doesn't go on the ice. Long story short, without that That's daredevil hockey is. protection, because it's got that Kevlar protection and all the vulnerable areas where you could get sliced and diced. And you don't want that to happen, baby. So again, daredevil hockey, check it out online, daredevilhockey.com. Use the promo code Cam and Strick, Cam and Strick, and uh, you'll save 25%. So that is a hell of a savings right there with daredevil hockey. All right, bellman.com, B E H L M A N N.com. We love our friends over there at Bellman. I mean, what else can we say about Danny Boy and uh, <laughs> Dale? Everybody over there. I mean, who just makes you feel like you're the only like, – you're like the, every time you go there, they make you feel like you're the most important customer of the day. Yes, they do. The most important customer. And they've got a ton of selection, Cam. On one side of the street in Troy, Missouri, they've got that Cadillac, the Buick, the GMC. I'm looking at the Escalade. You're looking at the uh, frosted white uh, Buick Enclave with captain seats. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a I'll beautiful fucking, car. I'll drive that guy. I'll drive Great that for moms. And one of the most popular cars for moms out there. And, and Cam loves it, too. So you've got the Cadillac, Buick, GMC. On the other side of the street, you've got the uh, Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. So, again, something for everybody over there with Bellman and Bellman.com. Dan Bellman's been in the game for a long time. Okay? Yeah, yes. I mean, he's our that. OG sponsor, baby. We love yes, him. He is. He was. The and first from, one to, yeah, to ever believe in us. I yes, know. he was. Still does, Do you know dude. that today's our two-year anniversary? That's what I heard. Oh, my God. Two-year oh anniversary feels of, like eight of the Cam and Strick podcast. Feels like fucking eight years. I know. It has. It I feels know. like eight hundred and six. How many we got? 150? 53 or something 150 fucking three dude so my was chirping so my was chirping. i was on the radio the other day and i don't do interviews on the radio and i think matt rocchio chirped me he's like well you don't do right you don't well you don't do interviews i go motherfucker then 160 of them with andy like there's a reason why i don't do it on my fucking radio show because they're boring i do it on a podcast so we could get into detail baby i i, I don't need to do a fucking interview when i do an hour show i want to Tell you about my golfing game instead. Mm, We've done 160 yeah. of these things. You want to talk about your uh, candy corn that you're handing out for Halloween? I don't, I don't, Halloween I'm not candy, candy. I'm not fucking cheap. If you give me Terrible. candy corn, if I'm a kid, I'm spitting in your face. Oh my god! Get out of my fucking cheap ass. Candy corn's disturbingly gross. It's fucking wax. It's terrible. You give me candy corn, you a cheap fuck. Okay, mm. I give out fat ass Snicker bars. What the fuck I do? Do you think? Oh, Snickers! You can't go wrong. And brought from two days Reese's ago. peanut, Reese's <laughs> peanut butter cups. Hey, I oh, I made it. I made, 
Yeah. I, uh, back in the day, we uh, me and my brother would be home alone, you know, at Halloween. My parents would do that. And we'd literally hand old bratwurst out to kids with toothpicks. Like, here you go, because we didn't have any candy. Yeah. Work it. I know. That's what hooges do. It, we were like 12, 13 years old, That's and cool. we're like, getting broke because we, we didn't want to get the candy out. My parents bought us terrible. candy, and we're like, we're going to keep it. So we handed out old food from like three days ago. That they is didn't terrible. That's what don't ever do that, dude. Don't ever I do that. I was 12. It doesn't matter. Jesus. Don't ever. Well, I mean, I listen, I, I didn't do that either back in the day. Good so, for you. I mean, I never, good, I never, never handed out bratwurst. You're a good kid. Um, I was raised. But Bellman.com, totally. man, they will uh, take amazing care of you, man. Nothing spooky about our friends over there at Bellman. Oh, but there are some, like other, some well, some other car dealerships they do. They will spook your girl oh, out. Oh, creep you know your girl that. right out. Fucking yes, swing, swinging her dick around. Like, come on in here. Yeah. I heard about your blind. Is that there no one them blondes coming? Oh, I got this one. Oh, I got this one. No, let's all There's go out happening. there together. Let's uh, no, surround no. her. Yeah. All right, Logan Brown back in St. Louis. He would be considered a local legend. Would you agree with that? I completely agree with that. That flow, dang right. But I was wearing that uh, hat all weekend. I had a best. I got golf lessons with that hat on. I am driving that motherfucking ball, baby. Mm -hmm. I'm turning my head. Our boy, our boy Ryan just uh, came up with this concept. It's a great clothing a comp a company, apparel company, local legend. Like this really applies to all of us. Everybody knows a local legend. Everybody has a relationship with a guy that you would say, wow, this guy, locally, this guy is an absolute legend. Well, you know any local legends? One. You know any local? <laughs> you are too, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> if I'm not, then what? what, what who is that? <laughs> you? But their merchandise, <laughs> their merchandise, man. They got hats, shirts, koozies. Yeah, they got glassware. all, baby. I used the glassware a lot this past weekend. Yeah, I was crushing um, stuff with that. So that's how we get our minds right using the uh, local legend glassware. They got wine glasses, rock glass. What's a rocks glass? Probably with a whiskey. We put it like a ball, like a little ball. Yes. Rock. Yeah. Yes. I got one yeah, of those. They're exactly actually really classy. Oh, I can't Me drink too. whiskey though. Uh -oh. I don't you do can't? that. Dude, I drink that. I drink that. I get weird. Whiskey. I get weird. I can't do, do it. Do you? Oh, don't do that. Whiskey makes me kind of funky. I could drink fifty okay. beer in a day, and you don't even know. But I drink whiskey. I'm like, man. Yeah. Uh, rock like, glasses. Oh. Yeah. So, but the pint glasses is what I've been using. I got the rock glasses too. They got that local ledger, uh, local legend uh, logo uh, laser etched right on it. So it looks nice. Uh, so it's perfect for that home bar, the man cave, whatever. The hats are sick. I'm waiting for Cam to post a picture or on his Instagram story with that local legend hat. I will. I will. I, don't know. I, 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 I gotta, did, I gotta I, tell you every day. Well, well, I do it, but you can't see it because Kate's Kate's filming me, and I got it on cooking and shit, and it's just like I, she needs mm -hmm. to like go a little farther up. But I wear that so damn let's thing. Celebrate the local legend uh, in all of us that we know. It could be the mailman, could be a police officer, a firefighter who just like saved like a cat up in a tree or uh, something like that. Yeah, no baby you never know, man. Uh, a lot of things kind of fall in that category of local legend. So. Be a legend, don't be a Leo. I think that is like the best advice for everybody. Yeah, uh, you can you can go on one side of the ledger or the other, and uh, mm. let's make the right decision. Be a legend, and let's never forget about the lady legends. There are lots of lady legends out there as well. Here, oh, your friends yeah. that you hang out with, <laughs> <laughs> the lady legends. I'm going out with Karen and I. I'm just gonna we're gonna go to dinner. <laughs> okay, honey, have a good time. That's so weird. Her husband. Her husband's busy, so I'm going to go out with her. <laughs> okay. She needs support, okay? I'm going to be a shoulder to cry on. <laughs> Fuck. There's tons of different colors and styles. So uh, mention the promo <coughs> code STRICK. <laughs> that is the promo code STRICK. It's going to save you money. So yes. mention that promo code STRICK. I want to see some pictures from the listeners, man, who's wearing that Logo Legend hat, wearing that Logo Legend hoodie. They've got some awesome stuff, man. So check it out. Logo uh, Local Legend. And uh, www.bealocallegend.com. That is the website, bealocallegend.com. And their Instagram is at bealocallegend. Cool. Bealocallegend. That is their Instagram. So check that out. All right. It's that time of year. Also, it's about to uh, hit fire season, man. You know, it's going to be a little warmer this week, so I'm putting it off. But it won't be yeah. long before I've got the fires going on in the backyard, Cam. Me too. And I'll be sitting in my custom sports chair. I got a couple of those babies coming, and people can get those as well. And get them now, man, in time for the holidays. And this oh, is one God, of, yeah. when you want to get the, my custom sports chair. These things are incredible. Use that promo code CAM and strict. You'll get free shipping. Now, here's the deal. You can pick out any team, any sport, whatever. 
And then you can customize it. Like if you get like a, uh, for example, if you wanted like a, a Vancouver Canucks one and on the back of it, you could, you could get like, uh, you know, city or something like that. You can get Bortuzzi. You can get whatever you want. I mean, yeah. you want to get, you know, it doesn't really matter what. Great you can guy. get Jeff Brown if you want. You know, yeah, Brownie Vancouver. too, baby, with that flow. <laughs> We're walking that line on a D. Yeah. You know? I know. Trevor Trevor Linden. I mean, if you want to get, you know, a, a, right. a, a Minnesota Wild one, man, you can get a Caprice off. Whatever you want to do. Yeah. Get the number. Get the name. Go to Calgary. Get that Matthew Kachuk one. These things are cool as hell. You can get a Hockey Canada one. You can get a USA Hockey one. So, again, there's options for everybody. You can get a Devils one if you want to get a Kovalchuk. You want to get a Parisi. You want to get a Niedermeyer. Like, whatever. Who? Jansson. He's extra Swedish. Two S's in it. I don't know. He's soft. <laughs> yeah, he only played a little bit. Don't worry about him. Like, get a Kovalchuk. Like, wow. <laughs> yeah, get a Kovalchuk. You get, get a, a Jansson. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Well, you can customize it, Cam, with your business. If you have, like, a uh, – the logo from your business like you can get a cam and strict podcast one and true story they are selling the cam and strict podcast chairs so order yeah. that bad boy too I got one coming and put that in you. your back deck probably get laid you might seriously you might the but neighbor if you're a business come owner and you want to have like your business represented at your house or maybe in the uh in the office or something like that at the workplace where the lounge is like hook up one of those too, man. They can do anything for you. So again, my custom sports chair. These are hockey guys. These are Canadians. These chairs are a hundred percent Canadian. Cam, what does that mean? You think that they're funny because Canadians are hilarious and they work hard and mm. um, good people and they drink beer and they love hockey. So yeah, you got all la- that combined. Yeah, and they last in any weather condition. I want to mention That's that true. too because you can keep them outside. So it doesn't matter snow, rain, whatever. They're still going to last. Saskatchewan. Over 500 designs for cor- corporate clients. Custom designs are available. Like I said, bring your brand to life. My custom sports chair, our chair, our way. All right, let's get out of the way. Let's bring in the one and only Jake Allen. Great goaltender, man. Perfect time to bring him on board with training camps just getting going. The preseason schedule getting going. So enjoy this here on the Cam and Strick podcast. It's Jake Allen brought to you by Hair Club, baby. The Cam and Strick podcast is brought to you by Car Shield. You know, nothing more frustrating, Cam, than when that engine light comes on. And you know, right off the bat, you're going to have to spend thousands oh. of dollars <gasps> to repair your vehicle. Call 800-857-2481. Mention the promo code CAM. Mm. Or visit carshield.com and use the code CAM to save 10%. That's carshield.com. A deductible may apply. Save yourself money. Sign up and get your coverage now with carshield.com. Now to the interview. Hello. What up, Snake? Jakey boy. (laughs) Hey, guys. How we doing? What up, dude? Where you at? Are you at the grocery store? No, you know what I'm doing right now? I'm sitting in my garage. I just finished mowing my lawn. You mow your own lawn? <laughs> oh, I do. I do, Cam. Do you? Hell no. No, I, uh, uh, no I figured that. <laughs> no way, dude. The, uh, the, the, the golf course would be like, uh, you're a hillbilly and you don't know what the fuck you're doing. Spend the money on a professional business. And that's what I do. Where are you living at, dude? I'm actually still out east in Atlanta, Canada right now. So I'm going to head to Montreal next week. So I'm just... Uh, Obviously, we had a short summer this year, so I'm just yeah. trying to enjoy the last the last week here before I head out. Isn't that brutal, though? Sorry, Andy, but isn't that brutal, though, that summer? And I know we're going to get into all kinds of stuff with you, Jakey, but, like, I've been through it, too, yeah. where the short summer, and you're like, oh, it's August, and I haven't done anything yet. And I'm <laughs> like, oh, okay. I don't know if that was the case with you, but, man, it goes by quick. Yeah, well, this year, it's, well, obviously, the COVID. Like, we didn't finish till our last game, I think, was July, July 12th. So, you know, you think about that by the time you get back and, you know, you you got to go through your exits and, you know, wrap up shop and you get home a week later, then it's like the 20th of July. And then, you know, the next thing you know, you're already in August and you just got home. So it's uh, this year was crazy, but it was uh, it uh, looking forward to going back. All right. So so what's it like having to leave, though? Like because you have your house, you're set up there. I mean, the summer is kind of your time, your free time. When you're preparing yourself mentally to leave for the season, like, is that difficult to kind of say goodbye to your life where you're at now and just get, get yourself ready for what's to come? It's like the storm is coming. Yep. Yeah. You know, I, like, I feel like, Cam, you would know too, like hockey players, they almost have like two different lives. You, you, you live like you have your, you know, your place in the season and your place in the summer, relatively speaking, most players do. And, 
Um, you know, he should sort of shut off the switch a little bit in the summer and just chill out, get away from it. But then this summer for us, you know, less than two months of the summer, you, you really don't have a whole lot of time to, to get away. You got to sort of find a way to get back in that groove. So I, I'm, I'm a big routine guy, probably like most hockey guys are. And I like to get back in the groove with the swing of things again. So I'm looking forward to getting back next week and, um, different year, obviously this year coming up too. I think we're all looking forward to getting back to, to a normal year with more normal activities going on daily at the rink and, and on the road. And, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. You know, it last, the last year and a half has been tough on everyone, and I'm just trying to move forward here. Are you fishing today? Are you fishing every oh, single day or what? Andy? Oh, big time. Oh, loud. Well, you, you want to know what I'm doing? I just So I just finished mowing my lawn. I have a skate this afternoon, but before that, I am getting all my fishing gear ready. I'm going on my last fishing hurrah this weekend before I leave early next week. Like, explain that. Like, where are you going? What kind of fish you catch in? Like, what does that entail? Uh, fishing for Atlantic salmon. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, Andy. So that's oh, like the real... I could actually eat that. <laughs> Andy. Yeah. No, we're fly fishing over here. So, I, I on the Miramichi River, it's a, it's a river that, uh, if you know anything about Atlantic salmon, it's sort of, it's sort of a famous river, and I'm uh, very fortunate to have it close to, close to where I, I live. So, Pack it up. I'm going to leave tomorrow after my skate, my workout, and go fish for two days. And that's pretty much my last, uh, you know, dose a little bit of reality before, you know, the big 82-game season hits. So I'm yeah. looking forward to it. You could probably drink that water. I mean, yeah. how, how oh. clean is that water where you're fishing? In the Atlantic? Yeah, it's actually under – it's not in the ocean. So it's a river that flows into the ocean mm-hmm. that the salmon come in to, to spawn, basically, to lay their babies. So it's uh, – it's, uh, it, it's a pretty special place, and, uh, you know, I, I want to get a few of the boys. It's tough to do it in the summer when hockey's – when I get too old and fat to play the game anymore that uh, I want to get a few of the boys to come up. I know Bozy is a huge fly fisherman. You know, I love to get Pricer up and experience that sort of – this side of the this side of the country that not many people get to come to. Andy thinks he could drink uh, ocean water. <laughs> Go ahead and try that, Andy. <laughs> Hold Go on. Go ahead and fucking try but, that. But, Jake, explain, like – where are you? Like for people who don't know, like they know Canada, they know Montreal, Toronto, yeah. Vancouver. Like explain yeah. where you Give are. Give me your address. <laughs> uh, I'm surprised you, you know, have cell service uh, right now. Actually, don't you normally? Uh, normally, you don't have cell service, do you? Not, not sometimes, but um, you know, when I was in St. Louis, I'd always explain it. Basically, I'd say, "All right, uh, I'm about four hours northeast of Maine." like uh, closer to the ocean. So Northeast of Maine. So, so I'm on the Atlantic side, as far as you can go, like not many people even know that there's four other provinces, you know, East of Montreal. So uh, just four little tiny provinces, you know, in in our whole province, we only have uh, 750,000 people. So, um, so yeah, so it's a small place, but I mean, uh, it's home for me and it probably always will be. You don't have that accent, though, man, with some of those East Coast <laughs> kind of accent. No, like, like Darren Langdon, like, York. hey, Derry, oh. what you doing, Derry Camer? Hey, give me that Derry uh, pop. Like, you don't like, have an accent Like Gerard Galan. Like, no, but yeah. the PEI, whatever, some of those guys. Yeah, the PEI guys, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, the PEI and the Newfie, yeah. Newfies have the, have the big accents. You know, uh, my accent, it really is nothing. You know, it obviously leaving home and living in St. Louis for seven and a half, eight years, everything sort of strays away and, uh, but those newfies and you know the Islanders, they always have their their twang, and it's, it's very easy to tell tell where they're from. It's it's awesome. They're I know. Fun, Remember, Ryan, they fucking drink. We, we had Ryan Clo on yeah. uh, several several months ago. We gotta get Langer on too. They're yeah, noofs, by the way. They're not newfies. He says he he says it's a noof. It's not a it's newfie. A noof. Yeah. I'd have yeah. They're, they're, up they're noofs. They're noofs. Yeah. So what's yeah. the wait? Does it get like hot in the summer? I mean, it's got to get cold as yeah. shit during the uh, during the winter. <laughs> Yeah, it does. It it does. I mean, you you have to embrace the winter time if you live here, and that's the way I always look at it. And you know, even for me this year in Montreal, like you, you really got to embrace the winter and uh, try to make the most of it. But yeah, in the summer it gets hot here. It, it really does. Like it's it gets up in the nineties, you know, at like high eighties. So it's uh, it's a good temperature. It's it's perfect. It's not as humid as it as it is in St. Louis for you guys, but uh, it's uh, it, it gets pretty warm in the summer. Obviously, shorter summers than than most but uh it, it's nice all right tell cam how like like what you do when you catch a fish like do you motherfucker <laughs> i know <laughs> do you cook it are you taking it home like do you fillet it like how do you like what no. what, what do you do to the fish before you get it ready to put that it thing on the grill in. 
<laughs> no, you don't. No, I, I honestly, yeah, I do. No, no, no. no in the Atlantic salmon and the Miramichi, it's uh, it's catch and release only. Oh, um, really? Get on with yourself, yeah. Andy. <laughs> yeah, it. Uh, you know, it's a. Uh, we're trying to promote a lot of. Can I con- have it? Conser- conservation. <laughs> but I, I want to eat you it. Can come- <laughs> Can I, I know. Just, can I just have one? Yeah, but how do they even know, man? You, it's not like you're killing a bear where it's just going to no, lay it's, there. It, it's just that the populations are declining yeah, so much because right of the fisheries in the ocean. So, yeah, they're trying to revamp the fisheries. And, you know, mm-hmm. 10 years ago, you could keep them. So uh, the goal is to try to get the fish count back up. So in a few years, you know, potentially that could happen again. You know, it's about preserving the environment. Thanks, really. Andy. And that's you really know, what it comes down to. Fish. Well, I didn't know what the rules are. You just got to know what the rules. So Mon- <laughs> what about Montreal? Are you living downtown? Like, can you go yeah. anywhere? Like, do they all know who you are already, Snake? Uh, no, honestly, Andy, it was a... Last year, obviously with COVID, it was uh, in Canada. The rules were a little bit more restrictive than they, they were in the U.S. And uh, we were very much on, you know, I really didn't leave my house last year uh, between the house and the rink. And I, I don't live downtown. You know, I live about 25 minutes away. Most of the guys with families and kids and stuff live uh, on suburbs outside the city. So uh, a lot of the single guys, I know Eddie, like Joel Edmondson and, you know, guys with girlfriends and things like that. They, they mostly live downtown in old Montreal and things like that, where it's beautiful. But, uh, last year was tough. You know, I ne- obviously never got to enjoy anything. I never got to a restaurant, you know, never got to do anything like that. Nothing was open. And, uh, this year I'm hoping to really get more of a feel for everything. And, you know, Montreal is a great city. It's Cam and, and Andy. I'm sure you spent some time there. Like the restaurants and the food scene is un- unbelievable. Ask our rookie so party, thought, Bill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So no, I'm, I'm looking forward to that this year. You know, last year was uh, very much on, on fairly strict protocol here with our team. And um, this year it's uh, looks like we're going to have a bit more of a green light to be able to live our lives a little bit. Yeah. Well, just after the game, I know no one's going to be there, but just walk down the street and go to that big party that they had with like 20,000 yeah, people God. and go mingle with that orgy. No fans inside, but 20,000 fans Staring outside. at a restaurant with three people in there. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just like crying. It's a crazy looking. That was that amazing. Was, that was weird. That was a weird scene one yeah. way or the other. Yeah. Yeah, it was. You know, it was it was tough. It, obviously, it was the, the government's decision. And, you know, it was we, we played in front of zero fans all year, as most of the teams did, but uh, even to have those 3,500 in the building felt like it was a full barn, you know, after playing the bubble in Edmonton with no fans and then most of the season with no fans. And, and obviously everything outside the arena was pretty cool to see. We never really got to partake in it as much. But, uh, you know, some games we that we won, we couldn't get out of our parking garage because the streets were, were, uh, were so blocked off with fans and people cheering and having a ball. And, you know, there was one game after we beat Vegas, we were stuck. The players were all stuck there until 2 in the morning. You know, we couldn't get out, which – it wasn't a bad thing. You know, we had a, enjoyed ourselves, have a couple of beers and some pizza, but we, it was pretty crazy to see the whole, uh, the whole atmosphere uh, outside the building. Listen, we've had so many former Canadians on and they all talk about like the experience of playing in that organization and like, you know, being at the ring for some of like the historic nights, whatever the monumental nights and all the hall of famers, all the legends who come down, like, you haven't been able to experience a whole lot of that yet, right? I mean, have you had like a Montreal moment where you're playing for the Canadians and all of a sudden like you're rubbing shoulders with, you know, some of the greatest ever? Or, or you, you haven't been no. able to do that because of everything that's been going on. Yeah, basically last year our team, you know, we're, it, technically we're we're basically a team bubble. You know, everywhere we went, it was the same crew because we got tested every day. Like I'm sure you've talked to a lot of guys who went through it last year. And, you know, in Canada, the protocols are a little bit stricter. And, um yeah, we, we never really had any of those moments last year. And I, like I just said, I, I'm really hoping that I get that Montreal experience this year. You know, we, we could see some of the people, you know, the big names that way they would invite to the playoff games in the crowd as they would, you know, show them on a jumbotron and things like that. But, but just to put on that sweater, you know, for the first time, I still remember that first game. I, I don't care. There's no fans in the building in Edmonton, you know, putting on that jersey and actually – Walking out on the ice was uh, was pretty incredible, and then be able to actually play at the Bell Center uh, again. Obviously, no fans, but uh, just envisioning what it would be like, uh, it was awesome. So I'm really looking forward to this year. You know, it it almost feels like it's this is the start of everything. You know, last year was uh, a little bit different, and this is the this is the real year. So okay, and you know what? When there is a packed house there, and they play Coldplay, and they bring out the <laughs> Coldplay that. Pretty cool song from Coldplay, and everybody's going crazy. They're right on top of you, man. It's going to be something. But, like, explain last year a little bit. Like, you're flying around. You get to your hotel in Ottawa. Well, yes, 
And you're like, what do you guys want to do? <laughs> oh, nothing. And then you're like yeah. watching SportsCenter or whatever, or TSN, and you're seeing these other packed houses in the U.S., and guys are kind of pre, pretty much freelanced maybe the second half of the year. But, like, what did you guys do? Like, did you play cards? Like, what? Like, you had to have been somewhat miserable. <laughs> Yeah, it was tough. You know, it really was mentally, and like especially like you just said, when you knew some of the other teams had a little bit more access. But hey, that's just sort of that was the situation the the cards were dealt with, and we had to deal with them. You know, and I'm not a I'm not a gamer. I've never played a video game in my life. Um, so you know, this year it, everyone's got the portable games, right? Yeah, like we basically were we were restricted to a hotel. We couldn't leave our hotel, and uh, that basically what it came down to. You know, a few of the boys would hang out in the in the team lounge, you know, play some cards. You know, I played some cards with some guys. Uh, a lot of guys would game, you know, it, it really was tough. And I think that was the same boat pretty much on all the Canadian teams, especially with different guys I've talked to around the league. And, you know, so that's sort of what it was. A lot of Uber Eats, you know, a lot of skip the dishes, things like that, you know, deliver to the hotel. And, um, yeah, that's basically what it was uh, all year. You know, it was long. And uh, then, he, then when we went down to – to Vegas to play game one there to packed house full barn, you know, 40, you know, I think it was 110 degrees outside or 115 degrees outside. And honestly, I think we all had nerves because it just felt like it was a totally different animal. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, I think that's why we didn't play our best the first game. I think we had a lot of adjustments to play it, to make just in that in general. And obviously the heat too playing down there and, 110 degrees outside with 20,000 people in the building. Uh, it was it was a game changer. It was huge. I, I still remember some guys overheating that first game and just trying to get used to, oh God, you know, yeah, playing again. You know, it's so it was a totally different animal. But it was fun to be able to play in front of fans again. You know, that's the way the game's supposed to be played. And um, you know, looking forward to this year, even though we we're starting out the season with 7,500 fans and hopefully by the end we can, uh, we can sell out. It'll bump up. And Andy, let me tell you that cute girl at the front desk in these hotels in Canada, I just felt bad for her. Just think about it. Just think about that. For a second. <laughs> that cute girl at the front desk, like the one girl, Oh my, we talk the about one that. girl the, that's the, around people working in the bubble, even in the I summer. Mean, but Hey Jake, do you feel like the other teams had an advantage over you? Like in the final, in the, uh, Whatever they called it. I guess it wasn't the conference final, but like the Whatever. semifinal. Yeah. So when you're playing in Vegas and then you're playing in Tampa Bay, do you feel like you guys were at a disadvantage because they had a packed barn that they were playing in front of? Um, you, you know, you know what it's like. It, it doesn't. Every home team always wants that crowd on your side. You know, it's definitely an advantage. And you know, I can only imagine the cab. You know, it like you get twenty two thousand people in the Bell Center when that place is rocking. It's yeah. it's like you got. It's like you're playing with twelve players on the ice. Yep. You know, so and that was the same thing in Vegas. You guys have been to the games in Vegas. It's just bananas in there, and it's so fun to play there. You know, it doesn't matter. If, well, obviously, I'm playing against them, but I'm sure the same thing. If you were a Golden Knight, just the momentum that it brings. You know, but I thought our guys handled it extremely well in Vegas, especially after the first game. You know, you get the jitters out, you sort of get the legs out. Um, you know, handling that in Vegas, I, I thought the guys did ex- like extremely well. And obviously even the 3,500 in, in Montreal, I, like I said, it, it the guys thrived off it. I know it was only mm-hmm. 3,500 people, but it we played in front of zero fans for almost, like I said, the Edmonton bubble and, and uh, this year, and like, it felt like a packed barn for us. So it, it really did help, you know, and, and just to know, I think the guys knew that, you know, the whole city was behind us in this run and, you know, it hasn't happened for quite some time. And, um, you know, it, when we got down to Tampa, we just, uh, you know, we, we just couldn't match that, uh, the depth and, you know, the speed and the skill that they had, you know, I, I thought our team played hard. We played well and, uh, that's a hell of a hockey team on the other side and, you know, very deservingly to, to win the cup. Yeah, man, they're good. Who wins seven they game series yeah. blues 2019 against that Tampa oh, Bay team. Oh, Andy, good question. <laughs> <laughs> who's winning that you know series? What? that's that is a good question Andy. like i think you're looking at a little bit different a team you know when we won in 2019 it was we were we had big d heavy d um you know heavy forwards you know i two really good goalies i'm gonna go with us just because i want to say it but i hey it's uh you know, I, I really do think that we, we probably at that point in time where, where our game was, where we were peaking at that, uh, 
at that time, I thought we could beat anyone, to be honest. It, it really didn't matter. And, um, yeah, that would that would have been a hell of a series, too. You know, Boston, obviously, in seven was a hell of a series. But oh, yeah. that would have been fun, too. Patty playing on both teams, I guess. He's just hanging out. No, no. He's just gonna hang out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's gonna score yeah. a big goal for both teams, and you just gotta even itself out. Hey, how's Kerry Price, man? How's your relationship with him? Like, he's so fun to watch. He's not acrobatic. Yeah. Like, you just like explain as a goalie what he does well to people. Yeah, you know, Price is awesome. He's. Uh, I never got to meet him before this year, so I heard great things from Otter when Otter had a stint in Montreal and. You know, other people that know him as Shedder and, um, you know, he's, he's awesome. He's such a great guy. He's so down to earth. He's so relaxed. Um, easy going, you know, me and him have a, have a great thing going here. And, um, he just proved that he's still as many people think they doubt him. One of the best in the world, if not the best, you know, he, he's right up there in the playoff run and he, he took us on his shoulders and, you know, took us all the way to the final. And obviously we came up a little bit short, but, uh, some of those games are some of the best goaltending performances I've seen in a long time. Oh, yeah. And uh, he uh, he's just got that natural ability and that desire to win when he puts that team on his back that, you know, it's unteachable. It, you know, either you have it or you don't. And, you know, that's why he said so much, you know, international success, success and pedigree. And, you know, I expect him uh, again to be uh, doing that for Team Canada in the Olympics again this year. And, you know, he's... Uh, he, he's just got it. He's got that it factor and mm. uh, only select, select few guys have, it doesn't matter if you're forward D or whatever position you have position you are. That's just, he's just one of those guys that has it. And yeah, he's getting a little bit older, but you know, he, he's still got the game. Well, why is he unteachable though? It's not like he's, he's Dominic Hasek where you're like, yeah, yeah, we don't need to replicate that. Or even Marty at times, or he's doing crazy shit, but I see, it seems like Carrie Price, he's just there. He just thinks yeah, the game and he I know. anticipates. That's why, that's why I laugh. Like when people say, uh, Carey Price didn't even have to steal a game in the playoffs. What? Like, why? Because he doesn't play, he doesn't play crazy. No, like he, he does, does, he's yes. not running, no. you know, sliding all over the place so and just unteachable. out of position. Why is he unteachable? He's just like, like sort of like you said, Ed, he makes the game look easy. He lets the mm. game come to him. You know, he doesn't, yeah, if he has to throw out a glove here and there, a pad here and there, he will, obviously, like every goalie. But he's just... Uh, his game's been the same since, you know, watching him at World Juniors. You know, I remember watching him. I can't remember what year he was, 05, 06 maybe, uh, maybe earlier. But just his game looks the exact same now as it did 20 years ago. You know, and that to me is just a testament of a goalie who, you know, it, it, it just has it. You know, the biggest thing for me in the NHL is, being able to do it consistently for a long period of time. That's for the guys that I have the utmost respect for, you know, mm-hmm. the Lundquist, the Broders and, you know, Price are like, it's easy to be able to do it for a year, you know, or like half a year, 30 games, but be able to do it for three, four, five, six, seven hundred 700 games in a row as a goalie at the NHL is, uh, is really difficult. And, uh, Price has played almost 800 games and, you know, at a level that not many goalies can play at and, those are the guys that I have the utmost respect for. And, you know, I really wanted to see him get that Stanley cup because uh, I think he deserves it. Mm-hmm. And uh, hopefully he can uh, find a way to bang one out here before, uh, you know, his career is over and put the icing on the cake. No, I like, listen, he seems like such a cool guy. Too. Totally cool. I mean, he's the same guy, no matter that he wins one, nothing and makes 50 saves yeah. or if you know you guys lose six to one, like he's the same guy in the post game, but please tell me, Jake, you've talked to him about, Cam just absolutely crushing him <laughs> along the wall in the Bell Center in Montreal. You remember that when Cam did that? I do remember. You were with the Devils, right, Cam? No, I was no, with, the with the Blues. I was with the Blues. Oh, you were with the Blues. Okay, but I do remember the hit. Like, you were going down. I think he was on his their home end, and you were going down the wall. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do remember that. And he was, I seen the clip. Uh, that was just, I don't know uh, That's his what fault. happened just after that. that. Just did say it. it. Did a did a fight ensue after that? Like what? What happened? No, they didn't really do he anything. He fucking knocked the wind out of me, Jakey. I got up and I'm like, ah, ah, and he grabs me from behind. Roman Hammerlick grabs me. Jacks all. They all come in, <laughs> but he knocked the wind out of me. But I believe that was his fault. He actually tweeted or uh, texted me he on message message me and said, yeah. "Hey Cam, hey, it just popped yeah, up. I just want to say, hey, I know. I'm like, you are a very nice person, Carrie. <laughs> I'm very sorry about yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's. Uh... He's one of the nicest guys ever. So yeah, no, he's. Uh, <laughs> I think he's got a little bit of an edge to him, though, when he wants to. And so it's. Uh, 
You know, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to be taking him on. He's a big man. Hey, Jake, explain to the people how much tougher the media is in St. Louis oh. versus Montreal. No, I'm oh, I don't do it you anymore. I know. You do it. No shit, Andy's, in a, Andy's out of the fucking game. He's kicking his feet up with me doing podcasts. Hey, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Like, it's a different. It's a different animal, though, right? Just in terms of the volume yeah. of press, and and is that did that take a little while to get used to, or no? A little bit. Well, the first day that I got traded, I remember. I remember that whole trade day very vividly, and um, I still obviously when you get traded, your phone's blown up off the hook. But especially when you get traded to Montreal, you know it's. Uh, that day, I remember they, they set up a Zoom or a conference call or a Zoom call with me, and there was I think there was sixty or seventy reporters in that call, and all, <laughs> just alone. You know, like it, like I was just blown away right there. You know, I know you weren't in person, but still, it just the fact of you know after games, you know, dealing with media. There's just you know in St. Louis, what it was like. You you sort of knew who you're talking to all the time, but in Montreal, there's just so many different avenues and. Uh, you know, media outlets, you know, French and English that they were, you know, trying to get their coverage. So it's, it's just, it's immense, but that's part of it. And it comes with it at any Canadian market really. But I think Montreal is uh, obviously there's double duty with both languages. So it's, uh, it's a little bit more. Yeah. Explain the both language thing. I mean, are you in a locker room sometimes and you got a couple of dudes over there fucking speaking French and you're like, did he just talk shit to me? And you're like, did he say something? How is your French? And is it, is it tough to like kind of get by without speaking it? Um, you know, my French is actually decent because I took it in school growing up here in New Brunswick. We're, uh, we're a bilingual province. So I had, uh, took it in school that I actually, oh, I played in the Quebec league too. So, um, my, my first year I played in Newfoundland and then our, uh, our team got sold. So I moved to Montreal actually. And then, uh, so spent some time in Montreal and actually played in Drummondville for half a year too, which is, you know, very predominantly French. So, to be able to under, I can pretty much understand everything in French. You know, anyone's having a conversation, I could to t- like dictate what they're saying. You know, I could speak it if I had to. You know, they might mumble mumble some words here and there, but uh, you know, around the around the rink, pretty much everyone's speaking English anyway. You know, it's like it doesn't matter. You have guys from all over the world, and English is ninety nine percent the predominant language, unless so you got two countrymen talking to each other. But no, it, it's pretty much all English there, and. You know, it's, uh, you know, Montreal's, you know, it, it's mo- it's a lot of English downtown anyway. Like, it's not mm-hmm. as much French as people would think. You know, you, you can, you really don't, you know, everyone can speak both languages. And uh, obviously it helps to, to have the French, but, you know, there there is a lot of English as well. It helps to have a, get a job speaking French up there. Big time. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. I mean, Unless yeah. you're a hockey player. It helps to speak English too if you if you only speak French. Uh, I think you're okay if you only speak French <laughs> up there. I'm just saying. Hey, and, and, hey, you know, credit King Louis the Fourteenth for bringing all the hot girls over there. But listen, go ahead. Well, there you go. There you go. Hey, listen, you knew uh, like the chances of you that you might get traded, but like when you spend yeah. your entire career with one organization and then you get the call, like what's that like? I mean, and and then you find out it's Montreal because you don't know where you're going to end up going, and and you know ends up being a team that's relatively close to your home. You were a fan of Montreal yeah. growing up, all that yeah. type of stuff. So everything seems to worked out really really well for you but just the the emotional part knowing that you're no longer with the team that you were with since you were 18 yeah you know that was uh you know i knew it was obviously a possibility coming out of the bubble there in edmonton but i thought it played really well in edmonton and you know you know proved that i still and i thought that season before i had probably played the best hockey in my career and uh knew that there was a chance. I understand the business very well. I've always been very interested in the business side of the game and, um, you know, what goes on, where, when, why, and how. And, um, I, I knew that there was a chance, especially with Bitter there, and, um, you know, the success he's had and the team and, you know, my contract and things like that. So, you know, leaving that bubble in Edmonton, I, after I played, you know, fairly well in that bubble, I, I thought there was like, hey, maybe maybe I'll still will be back next year. You know, I, maybe I'll still come back, be in bitter, we'll, we'll do our thing again. But, you know, I got a call. I was walking up to my gym and I, you know, it's like, Cam, you've been trading to see the GM's number on your phone. And I'm like, oh, no. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, the heart sinks um, a little bit and, you know, find out right away and that uh, instead of, you know, traded you and, um, told me to Montreal. He said, look, we don't have much time because it's going to be out in the media. He's like, I'm going to, I will call you in like a week and we can, we can chat then. That was from army. And, um, uh, next thing I know, you know, Berge events calling me and I, I didn't even have time to think, you know, and 
and the phone's blown up. My agent, Al Roy, is from St. Louis. And uh, yeah, yeah. so it's just, you know, it's a nonstop whirlwind. I think by the end of that day, when the media was done, you know, talking with agents, just things like that. It, then I sat down that night and, you know, it really started to sink in that, you know, I was drafted as a blue at 18 till I was 30. You know, it was, uh, it was tough to take. It really was, you know, at the time, I know I was disappointed and, you know, I love St. Louis so much and, and, and the relationships that I made being a blue and, you know, friendships and, and just all the things that, you know, came about just since I was drafted, you know, the hard times, the good times, the bad times, uh, you know, you sort of think about that for a few minutes, you know, obviously a few days more or less. And then, uh, you know, really realize that, you know, this is a, a new chapter, a new opportunity. And, and that's the way I looked at it. But, uh, yeah, the whole trade scenario was a crazy whirlwind in Montreal. And, um, especially with me being in Habs country here in New Brunswick, everyone's a Habs fan and it made it even, even, uh, even bigger for me. So, uh, it was exciting at the same time, but also bittersweet. And, um, you know, that's just the way I felt about that, the whole trade experience those couple days after, but, uh, it was more, uh, the hardest part was more getting your, your life straightened away yes. outside the rink. You know, yep. I still had a house in the gig Kirkwood and, yep. um, you know, all the stuff there. I, you know, I've been in the U S for almost 10 and a half years. You know, it's like, can you collect stuff from all over the place? I had two <laughs> kids in St. Louis, you know, so it was and then, and then you have COVID on top of it. I can't, I can't even go back to St. Louis to close anything up. I can't cross the border. It, oh. it, it was just that was that was the hardest part of the whole thing was was moving your life to a different country during a pandemic that you couldn't do anything about. I couldn't go down there and get my house straightened away. I couldn't yeah, any of that stuff. So that, that was more or less the hard part than the hockey part. The hockey part is the easy part. <laughs> Half my shit's still in Nottingham, by the way, because I can't go back and get it. I'm like, but by the way, when that GM calls you, Andy, mm. I'm not worried about getting sent. I'm not worried about getting traded. I'm worried about getting sent the fuck down, <laughs> which is even worse, by the way. Hey, listen, I was told to tell you that all the Kirkwood moms miss you, Jake. Just oh, so you know, they okay? Do. Just so you know, where's our Jakey? <laughs> yeah. well, where's Where's the snake? Where's the snake? Hey, boo? listen. So, um, but you sold your house. I mean, we can get into a little real estate buzz here, though. Like you sold, yeah. you, you sold the house to Bortz, right? Was he like? Did you give him a yeah. deal? What kind of deal did you give Bortuzzo? Well, the thing was, <laughs> so Bob, Bob, oh, he. Uh, so obviously, they knew I got traded. So I, I'm dealing with it, and the people that built our house. Um, you know, Tim Hertel, uh, he's a St. Louis guy. I don't know if you know him at all, but he's mm-hmm. got his office right there in Clayton. And um, he, he's also a real estate agent. So I, I reached out to him and said, look, you know, I just got traded. I, I, you know, I need to figure out what I'm doing here with the house. You know, Montreal said they're going to take care of the move. So they made sure all my stuff got moved up, which was great of them. And um, so he said, all right, we'll put it on the market. And, you know, I, I never heard anything from the boys because I knew at the time Bobo was looking at houses in Denver. Um, so I never thought anything of it. You know, it was, a, uh, it's not, it wasn't a luxurious mansion or like anything like some of the boys would like, but, uh, it was a nice house in Kirkwood, which I love Kirkwood to death and, um, you know, put it on the market. And then like two weeks later, I just, I was about to sell it. Bobo, Bobo calls me and says, Hey, you still get your house. You know, he was, he was looking for a house for, you know, him and his fiance. And I said, yeah, I do. And so I basically cut bait with the, you know, the people that were about to buy it and, and oh. said, all right, here we just, which uh, I'm sorry for those folks, but I uh, had oh. to do it for Bobo. And, oh my and, God. Uh, you ruined yeah. their dream. They, you, you were their favorite yeah. player too. Oh, they hate you, know you that? now. <laughs> they, 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 yeah. No oh, wonder there were Jake Allen jerseys being burned throughout Andy, St. Louis. Yeah. I was wondering what was going they, on there. Oh, when you lose a house like that, it's like losing a oh fucking my God. puppy no, dog. That feeling in your gut. Oh, Kate. Oh, God, when you get all excited, you think Jakey, you get the house. I don't know. You might have to write an email back. I'm sorry. Can you give them some tickets or something, Snake? Can't get over the border. <laughs> Sorry. I know. I know, but I said, all right, Bob, I'll know whatever for you. You know, Bob was one of my best buddies on the team. And, oh, yeah. you know, ever since he, he came from Pittsburgh. And so, yeah, so I'm glad that it, that he's got it too. It made it an easy sale, an easy transition. We, real estate guy, did it for both of us. And boom, Bob, my stuff was out and Bob was right in within a month. So it was awesome. Cam and Strick podcast here for our boy Dan Bellman with Bellman.com. Yeah, baby. You need some new wheels? Mm. Why not get a Cadillac, a Buick, a GMC? Head out to Troy today. 
And again, don't forget about Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram right across the street. No doubt. Right there in Troy, Missouri. Mm -hmm. Visit them online. Check out their new selection, the pre-owned selection, the best service you will find anywhere in the country. Bellman.com. B-E-H-L-M-A-N-N.com. Get yourself some new wheels in time for the summer. Yeah. Now back to the interview. Okay, so I'm curious, though, like when you find out you're going to Montreal, because listen, you're a competitor, and you just mentioned you came off maybe playing your best hockey of your career, so you're feeling good about yourself, but you're also going to a team where Carey Price is is the obvious guy. So like, how, how do you approach that like mentally, going to a team that has like an alpha dog like him you know, in between the pipes as well? Yeah, you know, I, I definitely knew that there was a trade, a possibility, and so did my agent, but I never really had Montreal on our radar just because, you know, you have Price or you have a, you know, a, a star goalie on the team. But, um, you know, I, I just had to make the most of it. You know, I was going into the last year of my deal as well, and, um, you know, I, I never really knew what to expect, and it, it was a pandemic year. We never had any re- decision on the season you know whether it was going to be a 30 game season a you know 82 game season is there going to be a season at all so you know I was a little bit you know up in the air of sort of what's going on and and what to expect but you know basically they they were very clear to me at the start you know they wanted me to come in and, and push carry and you know be able to take some weight off his shoulders he's played a lot of hockey in his career you know to be able to play almost 800 games as a goalie at 34 years old is, is a lot of hockey and I think they wanted me to just come in and sort of give him breaks a little, give him a little bit more of a breather, you know, and, and also have a backbone for the team. So when he's fresh, as you saw in the playoffs, he's unbeatable, you know, and I think that was the mentality behind it. And I know some people thought it was, they're paying too much for goalies for one year, but that's just, that is what it is. And, you know, fortunate enough, they extended me before the season and um, yeah, it worked out really well. You know, Pricer got hurt, hurt a little bit last year and I got to come in and, you know, I played 30 games and, you know, we found our way into the playoffs and you know, next thing you know, we're in the Stanley Cup final. So uh, I think it all worked out for both parties involved. And, um, you know, it's the same way I'm approaching this year to come in and, and spot Pricer when need be and, you know, play well for the team and, and just chip away, chip away, chip away and, and find our way into the playoffs and then uh, and then go at it again. It was almost the same situation, though. Like when you guys won the cup here in St. Louis, Mike Yo gets fired, Craig Berube takes over. Your coach got fired this year. All of a sudden, the interim guy who had COVID, he had to leave actually during the playoffs. I mean, good thing everything's yeah. okay with him and whatever. But And then you guys go to the Stanley Cup final. I, were you thinking, wow, this is almost like – this is very similar to what took place when you were with the Blues. Yeah. You know, it sort of was. There's definitely pieces. I remember talking to Eddie, Joel Edmondson in Montreal. And I was like, man, this, this is eerily similar. I was like – the weirdest part about it was the Montreal Canadiens won the, you know, the Clarence Campbell bowl, the Western conference trophy, which is the same trophy we won in St. Louis, mm-hmm. you know, and, and like for an Eastern conference wow. team to win that, you know, you know what I mean? Against the yeah. gold Knights. And then, uh, and like the whole, you know, obviously the coaching situation, like you mentioned, and just sort of being the underdog sort of, we barely made our way into the playoffs and, and now we're sort of battling everyone, you know, battling teams out and, it's sort of peaking at the right time and and obviously the we never got it done but it, you're right it was there was very there was a lot of parallels on that front and it was super interesting to see that okay so set the stage you lose what game was that andy they lost the lightning what games five five, five. five. you lose game yeah. five where's your research where you have uh, notes andy in front of damn you. it that's here's the point <laughs> you lose everybody's devastated What's the, like, what, what are you guys doing right afterwards? You shake hands, you go in the locker room. Is everybody just sitting there like, oh, God, is everybody comforting Shea Weber? Does Bergie come in and say something? Does the ownership group, group come in? Like, explain uh, that scene right when you lose. Yeah, you know, that was, it's obviously tough. You know, if you, even if you lose a tournament in the minor hockey, you know, in the final, you, it's sort of the same mindset. You go in there, you sort of, everyone's disappointed. You work so hard in such a tough season mentally and physically to get to this point, you know, you lay it all on the line and, you know, you just come up just a little bit short of achieving the ultimate pinnacle in hockey. And, you know, uh, like I said, like you said before, being Eddie and we're very fortunate that we, we got to do that a couple of years ago, you know, but uh, like you feel for a guy like Webb's right. Who's, you know, played 18 years in the league, played a, a hard, mean physical game for so long. And he's never made it past the second round of his in the playoffs until this year. And, you know, to get 
fight all this way, playing through pain and injuries and, and to get to the final and, and come up this short, you know, at, at this point in his career and even guy like price who played so well and to get to this point, um, you know, it's that, those are the guys that I felt for a guy like Corey Perry, who's lost in the finals two years in a row to the same team, you know, who laid on the line, who's a hell of a hockey player for us all year long. Um, those are the guys that, you know, I was more of a, a support piece, obviously during the cup run, but those are the guys that I really, you know, felt for. And, you know, obviously for the young guys, it was, uh, it was a life changing experience. I hope, you know, uh, I've got to be on the good and the bad side of it and, and see both of it. But, and then, you know, the coaching staff just came in very quickly and Burge, you know, obviously said their two cents and there's really not much to say at that point, you know, everything sort of spilled out on the ice everyone's left it out there and uh, you really need a few days to reflect on what, what you learned and what you didn't learn. And, and then you can really, you know, share your thoughts together at the exit meeting. So did you uh, do anything that night though? Like, do you guys all go out as a team to dinner or anything? Uh, or everybody just go their no. separate way. When, so it, it will, as a Canadian team going to the U S by the federal government, we weren't allowed out of our oh, hotel. Yeah, so we need right. a Jesus. hotel room. So we were restricted to just our hotel room. So yeah, so we didn't have, uh, you know, that night we just had a team meal and a couple of beers, obviously, and and relaxed, took the mind off it a little bit, and, and we had an early flight back to Montreal the next morning. So, so yeah, it wasn't like a normal year where we could have maybe, you know, done something differently, but it is what it is. The next thing you know, we were back in Montreal and, um, you know, just just following the protocol still till we left, and guys got out of there pretty quick. Like I told, said earlier, you know, it was already the middle of July and next thing you know, it'll be September. So it was, it was super disappointing, but the guys, you know, that the older players, even Eric Stahl, you know, uh, had a chance to, to do it once in his young career and then do it at the end. Same thing with Corey Perry. Um, those are the guys I, I really, really felt yeah. for. And, you know, I still do to this day. Yeah. Uh, like super likable team. I will say that 100%. about your team. Yeah. Like it was easy to, you know, Cheer for, cheer for you guys but can i ask you about shea weber though like because because he is yeah. such a warrior and he he has been such a great player and everyone thinks of his shot and whatever but you just mentioned like how hard he played oh. and how long he played Man. how how much pain was he playing through like what did he have to do just to prepare himself to play the deeper you got into the playoffs yeah you know obviously i i this was the only year i played with him but just watching him from this year and, and talking to some of the guys, Brendan Gallagher, who's been here for a long time with him. Like he's one of the toughest guys I've ever seen, you know, just the stuff that he would do to get himself to play and, and not complain one bit. You wouldn't ever know anything's wrong with him, but you know, when you talk to the medical staff, he'd have four or five things that, you know, he'd be nursing or nagging or injuries. And, um, he had to sit out the end of the regular season. Um, just to make sure that he could play in the playoffs. And then when he did play in the playoffs, he definitely wasn't a hundred percent. And, um, you know, he, he battled extremely hard to get us to the final. And, and obviously it's, it's going to show, you know, he, he's not going to be with us here to start the season. And I'm not really sure the plan moving forward there, but, uh, you know, he laid it on the line for us last year to get us to the final, to give us a chance. And he's just such a likable guy. He's so down to earth. You know, he's a great leader. Um, he's going to be really missing our locker room to start this year. And, you know, I'm hoping that uh, he, he can return to our lineup at some point and uh, make his presence felt again. But, yeah, he's uh, – you all know about the shot and the things like that. And I don't think his hands are doing too great this year. And so he, at the end of the year to let go of that big boomer. But he uh, – what he went through personally to get this team to the final is uh, I think all the guys know in the locker room that it's uh, – you know, unreplaceable and, you know, we're, we're literally going to miss him to start this year. So I'm hoping that things turn around and he can, he can work his way back. But, uh, you know, it, it was special to play with him for a little bit. All right. What's it like for a goalie, though? Like, especially all those years here in Jake, like you you were like the, the next guy, high draft pick, whatever, came in with a lot of attention. And, I mean, you had some some – you played some great hockey here um, for certain stretches of your career in St. Louis. Then you get to the final – and, like, you're not the starting goaltender. Jordan Bennington takes over, and, you know, you're on the bench watching. You're in the Stanley Cup final waiting your whole career to get there. Like, is that difficult as a goalie? How do you get through that, and how do you just accept the fact that, hey, you're not going to play unless something bad happens or an injury happens? 
Yeah. You know, honestly, when I, that whole year was wild, you know, I, well, obviously we weren't having success as a team and, you know, there, there were some spurts we were playing good and some bad and it just wasn't working out. And, and when Binner came in, you know, as a goalie, like it's, it's one of those things that I always knew Binner was a good goalie. He just needed an opportunity. It's sometimes the hardest thing to do is get an opportunity. Oh, yeah. You just, it, it really is. And when you get those opportunities, you just got to make the most of them. And when I saw he come in with that little swagger he had, it kept building, it kept building, kept building. I knew what was going on. And I knew, I didn't know we were going to go in the Stanley Cup, but I knew that he was going to take us to a point you know, as close as we could get, whether we even got in the playoffs or went around or two, he just had that, that, uh, swagger, that charisma, that, that, uh, he wasn't going to be stopped at that point. You know what? I, I just said, I'm going to embrace this and I'm going to try to play too. And, and looking back on it, that second half of the year, like <laughs> I thought I played at some really good hockey, but <laughs> bitter was just un bitter was just unbelievable. And you know, if it wasn't for him, we would not have won the Stanley cup. You know, the the blues would be in a totally different situation right now, but he just took the team on his shoulders and, you know, it it was amazing to watch. And I'm so glad I got to be a part of it. Just uh, some of the best goaltending I've ever witnessed. And um, for him to do that in a rookie season, you know, on one of the biggest stages in the world uh, was just incredible, you know, and I was super proud of him. He, uh, you know, he handled it like a champ. He had his, he had his, uh, he had his confident moments, but Hey, you back them up and that's all that matters. Yeah, you know, you can, you, you can have those as long as you back them up and, and that's what he's all about. And when he has that little chip on his shoulder, that's when he plays his best. And, um, you know, we saw it firsthand and, uh, even the following year, he, he played well again, and, you know, just to just be able to re, you know, re repeat that again to keep that going consistently like I said before is is the hardest thing to do as a goalie and um man he I just tried to embrace that role that whole playoff run I enjoyed every I enjoyed every second of it I had a ball doing it you know the best part getting into one of the games in St. Louis I think it was game three um you know we were down five two chief puts me in and um you know that whole experience I knew the game was over at that point I just embraced the whole thing. You know, I was looking around the crowd. I was, you know, I was like, look, I, I might never get to play in a Stanley Cup final game again. I just told myself, let's enjoy this. And uh, I think I only had like 10 or 11 shots. So it really wasn't much work, but it was just the whole, the whole factor of stepping on that ice, you know, getting a little bit of a cheer and, you know, seeing my kids up in the stands and that mm-hmm. stuff. That was, that was pretty neat. But but the whole run, I just tried to embrace it, you know, be one of the boys, do whatever I needed to do for all the players on the team. And, you know, I loved all those guys and I still do. And um, it, it was an awesome ride. And, and you know, I'll, I'll never take it for granted again. Well, yeah, man. And let me tell you this right now. We evaluate everybody here on the Camus Rick podcast. And the way you played that <laughs> whole thing, dude, was so professional. Every time we're in the locker room, Andy, Jake's always talking to you. He's always mm-hmm. the last one after getting fucking bagged. You come in. And let me explain something to people. When you sit out games, there's a competitive level in your head when you're a hockey player, man. And I'm not going to lie to you. When I was sitting out and another tough guy was in, not that I wanted him to get hurt because I liked the guy, but I wanted him to turn the puck over <laughs> once in a while so I get the fuck back in there. You know, you just have that competitive edge. But how you played everything, man, was just was fantastic. But let me ask you, whenever he was getting a little cocky at the beginning, Benner, and he's saying those things where you're like, okay, dude, I, I know we're kind of the same age a little bit, but settle down, right? Did you ever have that feeling? Uh, yeah, I did. And there was one time, I do remember, he wasn't playing full-time then. We were playing against Pitt at home, and, you know, he he went in. I got pulled. I think it was 4-1. to one, and I think it was 3-1, and then I got pulled at the start of the third. They scored. It was 4-1. And he goes in, makes a save, and sort of tosses the puck. Uh, one of the players and I just said, Benner, like, like, come on, like, you can't do that right now. But I knew, but I knew at that point he had that confidence and that little chip on his shoulder that that's just him. And I've known Benner for a, for a long time and I knew that's the way he played and, and that's what he has. But, you know, when he got in there, he was playing well and he had those moments. I wasn't going to say anything to him. He, you know, no chance. That's, this is his chance. This is his opportunity. And I still remember the, the first game against Philly in Philly. I, I think he got a shutout. Shut out. Yeah. He did so. get a shutout. Yeah. I remember I told him in morning skate because, you know, 
obviously Villy was around as a prospect, a really good prospect. He still is a hell of a goalie. I said, this is your opportunity. I said, this is your chance. And and I still remember telling him that in the morning, four morning skate. I said, make the most of it. And mm-hmm. sure enough, he did. And, you know, I, I still remember that because someone told me that before my first game in Detroit. And, you know, I thought it worked well for me. So I just wanted to make sure that he had success. And, um, man, he uh, he played lights out. And, you know, the rest is history. Who told you that in Detroit? Uh, it was a goalie coach that I had uh, growing up, and he just said, you know, make you. the most of this opportunity. And, you know, that was it. And I just thought it, it worked well. And I've always been a, a believer. You don't get many opportunities in, in this life in general. And I just said, doesn't matter if it's hockey or whatever the hell you're doing. It's If you don't make the most of that opportunity right off the spot, you might not get one again. And that's sort of the, first, the way I approached, you know, my opportunity in 2012. And um, that's the way I... I wanted Benner to approach that opportunity there. And, and I've always really liked Benner and I'm really glad he's had great success. Yeah. And your teammates like raved about you, like in, did, in between dude. periods going into overtime, like you're like, handing out like tape to guys and like Gatorades and stuff. We like want to hire you like, on, the, on the podcast. Know, like that can't be easy to do, especially when, you know, you've, you've been a, a really good goaltender throughout the course of your career. All right. A couple more questions yeah. though. Uh, what's the story like when you're younger and, like you, you got invited to play on the U18 team. Like no one really knew who you were playing like in the town that you grew up in and whatever. You were like completely off the radar. And then you end up going to the under-18 world championships and you're named the top goaltender. And now you're on the radar and you've never left the radar since. Like what did that opportunity mean for your career? And how did you get the opportunity? Yeah, that that changed my career. Obviously, it, it, it opened doors for me. So basically what happened was I was playing – I was playing major midget here in New Brunswick, which is a small five team league. Uh, when I was 16, I never got drafted in the Quebec league at 15. I was small and I grew a fair amount when I was 16. I got drafted as a, as an overage in the draft, um, went to junior camp, major junior camp. Didn't know if I was going to make the team. I, I didn't know how good I was or how good wasn't, you know, I didn't know where I, where I stood, but I kept growing and I kept growing and I kept growing and I made the team that year. And, uh, played well. And then there was one game in Shawinigan. Uh, I remember that's the game. Uh, my coach put me in. I didn't know if I was supposed to be playing or not. He goes, you're playing today. I said, okay. And that's where the game where the hockey Canada scouts were at. And I, I might have one of my best games in my career. And um, our season was over in the playoffs. I got, and then I got a call. I was just planning to head back home, you know, finish my high school. And uh, I got a call and said, would you like to play for Team Can and go to Russia? And I said, I didn't even know about what the tournament was, to be honest, because I was so far off that radar that I had no idea about it. And I said, yeah, sure. So I, you know, next thing I know, I'm flying to Toronto to do a practice and then off to Russia. And it was crazy. I've never been overseas. I, you know, I've never played on Olympic ice. I, and the funniest part about this whole tournament is that we first went to Belarus and we had sort of a, a pre-tournament camp there type thing. And we played Belarus in Belarus and we lost seven to six. <laughs> and if I, if I believe it's the only time in history Canada's lost to Belarus and I was in net. Oh, oh Jesus, but, Jakey. <laughs> yeah. But I, uh, I couldn't figure out my, the angles. I've never really skated on international yeah. ice. Like I just, I couldn't figure it all out. So I was like, Oh boy, I'm never going to get to play in this tournament. And then, you know, I, I, I worked my tail off the next few days and, and kept getting better. And uh, the late Pat Quinn was our head coach and he, uh, he gave me the opportunity. He said, you know, this is, this is yours. This is your tournament. And, you know, I, I, uh, I just went with it, made the most of my opportunity. Next thing I know I was dropped at the blues. And if I didn't have that tournament, you know, maybe I would have got drafted in the NHL that year. And if I did, it might've been the seventh round, but maybe I wouldn't have. And it changed my life and, and changed my career. And, you know, if it wasn't for that tournament, you know, Pat Quinn giving me the opportunity that uh, there was no way that I don't think I'd be sitting here talking to you guys right now. That's well, probably a trivia question, Cam, for, I the, don't, for the boys in like Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. Like who was in goal when the Canada <laughs> yes. lost to Belarus? Hey, let me tell you, though, that big ice, well, fuck yeah, oh, off sure. the bat, homeboy. Mm-hmm. I couldn't get to anybody <laughs> until you find a group. How was that first power play fucking unit on you with that big ice, Jakey? Yeah, well, you know what? It's, it's wild because it was – you hear like – 
it was more or less like I, th- I don't even think I probably had like 15 shots against Belarus, but I was letting shots in that I just thought I was on my angle, but I wasn't and like the net, like it's just so different. Yeah. And, uh, but the big ice power play in that, t- those tournaments, like against all these top prospects in the world, you know, like you're getting, you know, first overall draft picks in the NHL, like just unbelievable talents, just the puck is zinging around a million miles an hour. There's so much space and definitely a different game, you know? And then, uh, I got to go play in the Spengler cup also, when I was 20 so that was another chance to play at the Olympic ice and uh that was a pretty cool opportunity where was that at that was in Davos Switzerland so, oh uh, lord EB yeah <laughs> oh. yeah so I was playing in Peoria at the time that was my first year in the league you know I got off to a really good start and uh Army gives me a call I was just about to go home for Christmas back east in Canada and he says would you like to go to Switzerland to play in the Spengler Cup and I you know, I said, sure. So I, I, anyway, long story short, I got over there. I was actually was delayed two and a half days because I went home to Canada and flew, flew out. I had two days of snowstorms. I couldn't get, I couldn't oh, get out of the God. country. <laughs> uh, anyway, but the whole experience was awesome. And, uh, you know, Davos is a beautiful, beautiful place. Oh man. Switzerland compared to Russia. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, Lord. <laughs> hey, let me ask you this. So, and you know, J Bo went through a lot of different ups and downs and with this organization, with the fans and stuff like that. He was banged up, but he's such a great guy. And when that whole thing happened in Anaheim, I believe yeah. it was Andy, yeah. when you came yeah. out, you were playing that day, there was a TV timeout yeah. and you were right there and he collapsed. Just explain that whole moment and how scary it was for everybody. Yeah, you know, it's it's funny you said that. I was actually thinking about Jay the other day and I thought about that and you know, my wife was talking to his wife and, you know, that game, I still remember that. I remember he was stuck on the ice for a while. You know it's like? You get hemmed in your zone. You just can't get a change. And, you know, j Bo is probably the most fit human being I've ever seen in my life. And he's, a you know, the fitness enthusiast. He's just, he doesn't put a bad thing in his body and uh, takes care of himself like I've never seen. And, you know, he could, he could most likely stay on the ice for 40 minutes a game if he had to. But uh, it was just one of those shifts. He was out there for two, two and a half minutes. And I could tell he was exhausted. And, you know, TV timeout, you finally get a change. You go to the bench. You know, I'm skating to the bench. I always do the same thing. I get my bottle. And I'm sort of right behind Bo as he comes in. And, you know, I, I lift my mask up to take a drink of water. And uh, I just see – I'm looking right at him. He's two feet away from me. And, you know, as, as you do, if anyone collapses, your eyes sort of roll back. And he just sort of fell on the ground. And, you know, obviously a little bit of chaos started then, but uh, obviously thanks to, you know, Ray Barilli and, you know, his staff and, and obviously the, you know, emerging medical, medical services at the rink to, you know, to save, you know, Jay's life. But uh, just to be able to see that, you never expect to see something like that during a hockey game. You know, it uh, it was a life-changing moment, you know, for me, you know, personally. And I think everything flashes right before your eyes, obviously for Jay and his family and, uh, as kids and wife and, and the, and the toughest part about it was our father's trip, you know, it, yes, you know, right. and, and Jay, Jay's father was there and, um, you know, it, it just put like anything that, you know, puts things in perspective so much more, you know, about it, hockey's really just a game. And at the end of the day, and there's so much more to life. And, and that's one of the things you're concerned about when you see him up and leave on the stretcher is, you know, the life side of it, it's the hockey is you don't even consider the hockey. No one even wanted to play. There was no way either team could play a game after that. You know, they did the right thing to suspend that game. And uh, yeah, it was just very scary. And obviously the best possible outcome happened. You know, he, he got back moving. We talked to him that night, mm. um, which I think, I think was uh was a relief for a lot of the guys, you know, just to see him and hear his voice. And if, if anyone knows j he, he's like, you know, he's, a, he's hilarious. He's, he's a quiet guy, but when you get to know him, he's super quirky and he's got a great wit about him. And, uh, you know, was just joking that night as he was laying in his hospital bed, like not, nothing ever happened. And I think that put a lot of guys at ease and um, sort of also the fathers at ease. You know, you're, you're not just carrying, you know, 24 hockey players around. You had 24 fathers. And, um, you know, it was just, it was just a tough time and a tough moment, but it uh hopefully we don't have to see that again and i i know jay's doing super well now if you guys haven't talked to him and living loving life he's you know skis every all the time and is biking and you know doing the j-bow things that he does but uh yeah that was a scary moment and 
you know, hopefully that doesn't happen uh, to anyone else throughout the hockey career. Yeah. No, we actually, I, I got, I talked to him during the, we did a TV interview actually uh, during this past season talking about that. And, and, uh, but he's, it's it's interesting because he he acts like everything's fine, like he's just yeah. enjoying life. I That's mean, how he is. and he's yeah. you know he doesn't get too overly emotional when talking about it, you know. So it's just kind of that's kind of how he is, right? Yeah, Jay sort of that's just him as a person, you know. He's such a great person that he just sort of wants to you know park things and move on. And he doesn't want to talk about himself ever, you know. Uh, and and doesn't matter if it's a positive situation or a negative situation like that one. And you know, he he is doing good. You know, he's. He's back at it. He's doing everything normally like he, like he used to do. You know, I got no restrictions. And, uh, yeah. So Hunting it, with it his bare hands. Best. Yeah. I heard he's a hunter. Yeah. Oh, he's biking. He's doing everything. <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen. Yeah. You, you, like, I will say this about you also. Like, in, in addition to being a great guy, you're, you're like super resilient. Like, I mean, there's stretches during your, during your career where you struggled. I mean, and you kind of laughed it off a little bit. You know, like your, your you know, Januarys, a few Januarys that you had where you kind of struggled. But you, you got to set the record straight for us in terms of how this went down. Like when you didn't go to Winnipeg with the team, how difficult was that for you at the time? Like h- how was that decided? Were you upset? Was it good for you? Like did it give you an opportunity to reset or was it unnecessary? Like well, what would you think of it? I don't know. Yeah, that was that was tough. That was more of a shock than anything that night. I was just like – I thought it was a bit unnecessary. You know, I could have just went and not played. You know what I mean? It wouldn't, it would have been any different. You know, it, it was just more of a, uh, it is what it is, you know, that's just hitch in a nutshell, you know, and, you know, I, I respect him for it. He did it. And, you know, I came back and I played and it, it is what it is. I, I really don't have a whole lot of feelings over it anymore. It was, feels like that was a century ago. Um, but yeah, no, there's definitely, there was some hard times, a lot of good times, but some definitely some bad times. And, um, yeah, that was, uh, I didn't expect that. I remember after that game and it was just, it was, it was more of a shock to me. You know, I got home and I just like, what the hell is this? And I remember watching the game and I, you know, it, it just didn't feel right. And, you know, the, it is, it, those moments are going to happen throughout the career. And, you know, it, it did to me and it, that's really all I got for it. it yeah. I don't have a whole lot to say about it. I, I wish I could have went with the team and played the game, but um, hey, I got to spend an extra night at home. All right. Well, how'd you get your how'd you get your your the mental you. side of your game back? Like to get your game back to where it is right now. Like, how, who really helped you? And like, as a goaltender, when you're going through tough times, what do you do to get through it? I mean, are you like talking to somebody? Are you doing certain things away from the game to get yourself mentally focused? Like, how were you able to kind of get back to where you are? before you got to Montreal and certainly where you are right now. Yeah. You know, I, I think finally for me was, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm, I'm not a quiet guy, but I don't really explain myself. Like I don't really, you know, let things out a ton. And I think when I was younger, especially in those days that that was a lot of my issue. You know, I would keep a lot of things internal. And um, I think at this point in my life and my career, you know, I am just better at, you know, if something's bothered me, I'll let you know now, you know, I, I can just sort of spill the beans a bit more. And, you know, I, I think the biggest, one of the biggest helps was too, was the blues hiring Dave, Dave Alexander. And, um, for me, he's, I think he's probably the best, one of the best goalie coaches in the world. And, um, hopefully he's a mainstay with St. Louis for a long time, but not only for the goaltending specific side, but the mental side. And, and you know, a lot of guys, I'd, I'd say 60 to 70% of the guys in the league have their own mental coaches, you know, contracted outside the team. And I started to work with one of those the last two and a half, probably the last three years. And, you know, I think it's really done wonders for my game and, you know, just my persona on and off the ice and, and what's important to me and what isn't important. I think, I think growing, going through those growing pains in the, in the blues uniform, you know, it, looking back on it, there's so many things I'd like to have done differently that probably could have created so many different outcomes, but that's, that's what happens when things go you know sideways a little bit. And, um, you know, and just to figure out what's really important, what works for me and what doesn't, what I need and what I don't need. And I think at this point in my career in life, that's sort of what I've finally, like I've really figured out, uh, what, what makes me tick and what doesn't. And when the ticking, you know, isn't really, you know, on the right path, go back to what makes me tick. And I think 
I really limited those to such a small few items and few things that um, if I fall off for a game, it's really easy to fall, get right back on the tracks where before, you know, it would sort of dip and dip and dip. And then getting back onto those tracks was harder and harder and harder and took longer and longer to do. Where in the last two, two and a half years, when I feel like my game has been really, really solid, uh, if I had a bad game, it's really easy to jump right back on the horse and have another good game. Yeah, so yeah. I think that's the big, the biggest difference for me. Uh, when I was younger, and um, you know what, I, I'm I'm grateful for it. I, those hard times. I wish they were all good times. I, I wish, I wish we could have won three Stanley Cups in my ten years of blue, and and I hoisted all of them. But those those bad times are sort of putting things into perspective and, you know, making everything work right now. What do you hate as a goalie? I'm a goalie question here, Andy. What do you hate? Like, what's your biggest pet peeve? And not not the obvious shit like uh, throwing pizzas up the fucking metal or not being a pussy on the wall and just, you're getting hemmed in. or Not getting out of the way. Not getting out of the way. Oh, well, that's what Marty would be. Marty's like, don't, don't get in front of that damn shot. I want to see it. Like, is there any pet peeve that you have specifically that uh, just drives you crazy sometimes? Um, You know, I'll never – get mad at a guy for blocking a shot because cam you know what it's like it takes balls mm. it takes you know courage to do that like when guys are landing their body in front of frozen rubber pucks without the equipment that i have i will never ever say anything wrong with that i like that's i have the utmost respect for people that do that all the time night in night out but i think the biggest peeve there's I'm pretty easy going as you guys know, like I don't really care a whole lot about a lot of things, but honestly during a game when, when guys put their sticks in the lane, if you're going to put your body in the lane, it's a totally different circumstance, but the sticks always get me, you know, if you're just, if you're not really, your body's not in the lane and you're sort of throwing a stick out there, that's when a lot of the goals go in, you know, like a lot of floaters from the point where it should be a routine save, but a guy's trying to, you know, knock it out of the way with his stick and, you know, sort of be Albert Pujols, you know, in the middle of the slot. But next thing you know, it tips. And it goes top shelf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you know what I mean? No, that, that is, a, that for me is always sort of drove me up the wall a little bit, but uh, you can never get mad at someone. They're trying to help your team. They're not trying to do anything bad. And, and that's just the way it is. There's, there's so many variables in the game of hockey as a goalie that are so uncontrollable that you could have the best goalie in the world some nights a lot of nights and still lose because there's so many random variables. As you guys know, in a game of hockey pucks can go off asses. They go off skates. They flutter in over people. You know, there it's just, it's such a fast game now that the variables are so high that sometimes it, it really doesn't matter if it's Patrick Juan in the net or it's, you know, if, Andy put the pads on. <laughs> um, that's, that's just the way it is. Hey, please do. Hey, please do. All right. One or two more, man. And, and then we'll let you go. Yeah. Hey, one thing that's always like been amazing about you, though, and maybe most goalies are like this. I don't know, but they don't seem to like communicate it. But like you know, like every shooter in the in the in the league, like you're a total student of the game. You can talk goaltending as well as any goalie. But I remember one time you were telling me like William Carlson was like early in the year, like when his first year in Vegas, and you were like, "Oh, this guy's got like the best wrist shot in the league, or one of the best wrist shots in the league." He ended up scoring forty one goals that year. Yeah. I mean, so like when a guy is coming down, like you, you know the shooters. Like, how much are you studying this in advance of games, or is it just come from repetition and facing these guys? Um, I think it's just part of like I've always been a guy that you know I've loved to play player when I'm not in that, you know, I, I just think I have a more of a understanding of the way guys shoot pucks. I've always been interested in that. I know how guys shoot pucks, like off certain feet, you know, different releases, uh, things like that. Like I've really tried to understand how guys do it in different aspects. You know, you, you compare a guy, like I can use a blues example, like for a lot of, like for you guys to understand like Ryan O'Reilly to like David Perron, you know, like, like two guys that shoot the puck completely differently in different ways and different scenarios. You know, one guy gets it off faster. One guy has a bigger, straighter blade. One guy is a big, you know, a puller, you know, there's a lot of different things to understand about a shot and a release that changes a lot, a lot of things when the puck is shot, you know, like some guys will pull the puck six to eight inches, you know, inside or outside before they shoot it. Some guys shoot it square on, you know, some guys like don't have any, like, club head speed as as i call it you know don't really wind up their wrist shot it's i've always just been super interested in that side of it and i think there's a just skill for that and, and an understanding and 
Um, also watch a lot of the goals in the league, you know, a lot of, a lot of goals and a lot of players go back to tendencies that they have success with. And, you know, it, it's good to understand, you know, how guys score, where they score from, you know, their tendencies. Um, uh, and obviously in the, one of the big things for me is knowing who's on the ice at all times, like hand wise and personnel wise, you know, I always try to know the lines before I'm playing a team and what hand guys are. So if I know, uh, Austin Matthews is on the ice, you know, I know there's, you know, Marner and Hyman. So there's two other righties with them and it, it's sort of what sticks they use and tape jobs and things like that. It's just, I feel like it's something that you've learned over time. It's not something you, you start when you're 12 years old. It's just sort of as I've matured as a goalie and little tidbits to try to make yourself a little bit more successful than someone else. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. All right. I, I could have sworn one time you told me that Billy Huso is one of the most skilled goaltenders you've ever seen. I could have sworn you what said that. What does that mean, though? So what does what, that mean? So what does that mean? And, like, what – what's his upside? Like, you think he's got like that, like that high of a ceiling. Cause cause I do, man, I think he's, he's pretty damn good, man. When he's on for sure. And we saw that late in the season last year. Yeah. You know, I, I think I, I don't know when who's was drafted, but I think he was a high pick and he was a very, you know, pedigree prospect coming over from Europe. And, um, you could just tell on the ice, he had that skill and he's quick and he's strong. And he's flexible and he, he's a big dude. And, um, you know, it's taken him some time, no question, but it, it does for everyone. You know, not everyone's the carry price of the world. that can just step in and, and, and do it right away. And, um, I think probably work with Dave for another year here, um, we'll do him wonders and, um, find a way to, you know, get his game to the next level. You know, I, I never got to watch a lot of the games last year, but I, I heard he had great success in the second half. And uh, it's not surprising to me at all. He's a, he's a really good goalie with a lot of upside. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, him and Benner have a great, should have a great tandem this year. You know, it'll be fun to play against both of them this year. And, um, you know, I think uh, the, with the way Benner plays and, you know, Billy only improving, uh, I can only really get better from here is, uh, He's a hell of a goalie with a hell of a potential, and he's got great hands as well. He's got a great, uh, he's got great hands and uh, really good feet. I think the one thing I still remember working with Dave in the bubble is quieting his feet down a little bit, and it looked like last year that that uh, that really helped him a lot in the second half. So I think, again, I think working with Dave one more year this year will really probably blossom his potential even more. And uh, yeah, he's a hell of a goalie. All right, man. Right on, big boy. <clears throat> hey, listen, can't wait to see you back in St. Louis yeah, to get your first game to come back to play against the Blues. Yeah. So I would imagine you'll be in net for that one. That'll be that'll yep. be special for you. And the hopefully your uh, wife and kids come down for that game, too, yeah, if man. they can. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. I know my wife would love to come down for that. Obviously, she's still best friends with a lot of the girls on the team. And, you know, and uh, in the area, we've made a lot of friends, you know, outside the, outside the team as well in St. Louis. And, uh, she definitely wants to come back for that and you know see some people and no it'd be special for me too I really hope I get to play that game and hey say hi um, to Big Kurt hopefully... too say hi to Big Kurt I miss seeing yeah. Big Kurt when he came in town Miller his dad <laughs> yeah. oh yeah dad. no <laughs> yeah I'll uh, I'll tell him he said hello but he'll be uh, you know he still follows the Blues a lot so he's uh, all you St Louis guys he's still watching them you know knows all the boys on the team so it gives him something to do during these you know long cold winters up here oh yeah well man everybody loves you down here man they all miss you dude. You did a you did a great job down here, and your legacy will always be, uh, you know, great in this city, man. So go enjoy yourself. We'll all be watching, dude. Okay, thanks, guys. Have a great rest of the summer, and we'll yeah. see you when we see you in December in St. Louis. You right got on, it. Jakey. Have a great year, Jake. See you, dude. Okay. Appreciate it, man. See you guys. Bye bye. Hey, what's up, everybody? That interview was brought to you by Daredevil Hockey and DaredevilHockey.com. Use that promo code today, Cam and Strick. It's going to save you twenty five percent. All caps. Cam and Strick, Daredevil Hockey. Get yourself protected today. All right, that was Jake the Snake here on the Cam and Strick podcast presented by Hair Club. And um, he's a cool ass dude, man. Yeah, Jakey boy. Goddamn right. You could never handle, like, I could go fishing with him. I could probably do like a week long fishing trip. You yeah. couldn't handle it. I could. You couldn't handle it. A fishing so trip? I, I mean, I'm not a big fisherman. I, I, I'm, kidding. I got ADD, man. I need to like cruise around fast and stuff, you know. I'm not a big fisherman, so you're probably right. I, I couldn't. I mean, I could probably survive it, but I, mm. I, I wouldn't have as much fun just to fish. I like to swim. 
I like to fly around on the boat more than anything and just sit there. I don't like to touch the fish. I'll go buy my own fucking fish to eat, I guess. You know, it's a, I just, I'm just not a fisherman. I'm not a hunter either. Mm. I ain't no hunter gatherer. Okay. So but I don't there fish. was I don't this, uh, first off, is that a, uh, professional diagnosis, the ADD, or is that like, you just kind of yeah, I don't know. gave that to yourself? Well, I just, I just, I, 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 if anybody has ADD, it's me. So if anybody else has it, then I got it. If you have it, I have it. Like I, I, I can't, like I can't concentrate and sit still ever with anything. So isn't uh, that what that is? I don't know. Okay, so um, yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Thank you. Um, I had a neighbor uh, oh, named God. Trent mm-hmm. when I was growing Great up. Great guy, I'm sure. <laughs> he um, oh, yes. He would go fishing, and we would go fishing like in the neighborhood, like lit pond. Mm -hmm. the nastiest fish dude and he would like bring him over to my house and like he acted like he would like knew how to clean the fish and he would start gutting the fish out i was like nine years old it was so gross and we just like gut them all out and clean them out like and he would just throw them in my freezer you know i'm like we're never gonna make they're probably still in there (laughs) disgusting it was the grossest thing ever i don't deal with that shit so i I don't don't get get the fish out of here go throw them away no, you don't, you don't eat those fish. Yeah, yeah, you do. But these Canadian boys are fucking laughing in our face. They man. were bluegill. Just, bluegill. Yeah, I don't know. That's for children. But here's the deal: like these Canadian boys are up there fucking fishing all the time. They fish, they hunt, and then they listen to us. And we're, you know, we're from the Midwest. Like, no, like we're not like you're more of a city boy. I'm not a city boy by any stretch of imagination. But like, we're kind of pussies compared to them, man. Like we don't. I, I touch a fish and I'm like, oh, I'm slimy. Like, I shoot a gun. Like, if you come in my house, like, I'll put you down. But I'm, I don't know if I could shoot an animal, man. I don't know, unless I was trying to kill my wife or something. But I, I but these Canadian folk, they listen to us talk about fishing and how we don't want to touch. They probably laugh. They're laughing at us, Andy. They're mm-hmm. laughing at us. Well, and they're laughing fine. at you. They're laughing at you. No, they respect you, I am sure. No, they're, they're laughing at you. They understand that I have, like, I could serve. I, listen, I'd fit in perfectly fine out there in Saskatchewan. No, you wouldn't. There's no way you would. They would. They. You'd be like, "What are we doing?" They'd be, "Grab that, grab that hook, get that thing. We gotta get this thing out of here." Look, when I took my boat out when it was sketchy on the river, I always picked and choose who I felt comfortable going on the river with me because you go on the river, man, you can get into a jam so fast. You and want I have someone who can like, yeah, who can like I help you get out of that jam. I'm like, get, you gotta get out. And like their first instincts to get out, get the thing, get the reel, get that, boom, get the rope, get the rope, get the rope, starboard side, get that, get that, get that. And, you know, you go out there with your wife, like, it's kind of sketchy sometimes, when it's, so I wouldn't go out there, but I always pick and choose my buddies that were, fuck, I knew, could jump in the water, didn't care, mm-hmm. knew how to tie a loop, knew how to do this, knew how to do it. You would be dead fuck last on my list to take out on my boat. Not true. You would be dead fucking last. Why? I would take my cat. Why? Why? I would take my fucking cat to help me than you. Because you'd just be dead. If I had evaluated my buddies, you'd be dead last. You wouldn't know what the fuck to do. I'd be like, get in the water. You're like, my phone's in my pocket. I'm not getting ill. There's fish in there. I'm like, see, now now I hit a goddamn rock. Now we're sinking. You, you know, it's just we're fucked. I need a guy who's a warrior, who knows how to tie a knot, who knows how to get in the fucking water, pull the boat up, do this, do that. And you are certainly bottom of the totem pole. I think you have a wrong read on that. I think you have a Jeez, terrible boy. read on Don't that. I. I think I, Don't I? I? I would be, uh, I'd fit in perfect. I don't know if I fit in better in Alberta or Saskatchewan, honestly. It's like yeah. one of the two. One of the sure. two. What are you good at? I want to I want to hear from those boys. What are you too. good at? Cameos. What actually. are you good at? Well, cameos. What are you My good cameos at? are open. Oh, what am I good at? Well, I mean, like, in what terms are you of good what? at when it comes to outdoorsy fish? What, do you, what the well, fuck I are can, you good at? I Boats, can, what? I can cook. I can hike. I can uh, cook put what? A, pit, pitch a tent. I can uh, okay. set up the tent. I can help. Uh, Tell me how to set a fire. What would you do? If, what would you do to set a fire? What would you do? First thing you would do if you were in the middle of the woods and you had to set I'd a fire. I'd gather a bunch of had, like, like what? I'd, ba- I'd gather like tons of like little sticks and brush mm-hmm. and then get some big logs. Like birch bark and, light, and all that? Light, light that brush and those little sticks with little twigs and everything underneath it. Get the fire going, dude. GP and small, 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 yes, and bigger, yes, bigger, bigger. Yes, add on, add yes, on, add on. Yes, That's what you yes, do. Yes, a rock yes. serrano, so it doesn't. You don't have forest yes. pot fire. Oh, I'd have my rock pit. You put 100%. your rock pit. You dig the it out a little pit. bit. 
Yeah. Yes. And then yeah, you, you put a little, out. you put a little, you stick, you stack logs on the other side. So you break the wind. So if you're sleeping mm-hmm. on one side, you break the wind on the yeah. other side. Then no, you have a fire. 100%. Dude, I you would, don't I'd know to, shit. I'd be able to cook a little bit. I bring some entertainment. And I would just have fun. I'm like, tell, what are you a joke teller? Are you, <laughs> can you play the guitar? What, what do you? How are you going to entertain me? I sing a little bit. I sing. Oh, Jesus, you ever heard me? Are you sing? a comedian? What? How the hell are you going to entertain me? Seriously, I can tell. I can tell some jokes. Oh yeah, I'm very entertaining. You going to tell me stories? Those are fun. <laughs> Those are fun. Some st- story time. Back too. in my day, my buddy Trent. Um, but Jake, where he lives, it just seems so clean and everybody seems so nice. And I just want to get out there. I want to get out yeah, there. Yeah, Newfie's cool, man. How do you probably hey, will. Well, oh, yeah, well, been there. You've never been yeah, there. Yeah. Say, I played up there. What are you fucking talking about? You played, played a seven game series up there. Yeah. Played against fucking, yeah. uh, no, it was in, yes, um, it was out east. Yeah, it was I, in, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't think you did. No, it was a, what was a, the team up there? It wasn't Newf. It was uh, Nova Scotia. Same difference. Where would you apply? Oh, the Nova why, Scotia played, team. Why we would played, you apply there? Because we played them in Albany when I was in the minors. We played them in uh, played oh. Nova Scotia. Yeah, they were there for like seven days. They had a team up there in mm-hmm. Nova Scotia. I got gotcha. you. And you stayed there for a week. Mm-hmm. We flew mm-hmm. private up there too. Lou flew us private up there because we made the playoffs in Albany. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. How was your experience oh, wow. up there when you went when, we, when you didn't go? How was that experience? You kill a bear. Well, I haven't been to New. I haven't been to Newfoundland. Oh. I haven't been to Newfoundland. I was talking to somebody um, the other day who's got a place in uh, Montana, and we were talking about bears. And oh, because God. you know, a lot of these mountain people, like they truly just kind of laugh off the, the 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 black bear, like oh, they won't bother you. But he was like, no, 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 no. You never know which one you're gonna get. Yeah, no you shit. never know which yeah, one you're yeah, gonna get. You get pissed off, mama, dude. They so don't fuck you around. know that. That one that I encountered, man, I am so lucky that it wasn't yeah. in a bad mood that day. Well, it was so a dog, lucky. so you're fine, but those <laughs> bears would be bad. bad. But yeah, you can get a pissed off bear. mama, you can get a fucking, you know, a uh, starved bear, a fucking, mm-hmm. you know. No, just I, like know. A, I know. They don't I give know. a shit. My daughter, dude, she just wrote a whole story about our bear encounter, encounter for uh, for school. It's like it's a, probably going to be published. Actually, it's an amazing yeah. story. I should have you read it because it's like a, it's actually a better way of telling it than in even. Are there me. pictures in it? In the book, I yeah. don't know those pictures, but she talks uh, about how I ran down the hill. I, I, I like left her. I was like, I don't think it went that way. You know, I think it kind of <laughs> did. I think I believe Chloe. I think you fucking sprinted. Get them. Help me. Good lord, you be hey, the I worst Jake, guy. I hope Jake Allen has a great uh, season this year. So man. do I, man. We got a lot. We got a lot. Of, are you happy hockey's back? What, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah. You get into yeah. the preseason. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Dude, Curtis Gabriel was rocking some guys the other day. Um, then he got then he got he thrown around. He ain't gonna get, he ain't gonna make that fucking team, but but he was loud. He's gonna do his thing. He he, he taught. He, he's he, he's good for this. He's good for everything. I, you know, if he could skate a little better, it'd be hey. better. But he does good things off the ice too. With, oh with boy, uh, you know. Evander Kane, he's in a little bit he's of a just, jam now. I don't know what's going know, on. Giving up that. on that guy, like so fucking weird. And his wife it's might like, be crazy too, but I don't know, dude. Like you're fucking paying off bonds, no, no, getting is. them pregnant. And remember, shit. I, I no. said that at the beginning when all these allegations came out. You can go back and check the podcast. I said, listen, these are allegations. You never know, like. I don't know. Was he betting on games or whatever? So he got clear to that. We got to throw yeah. that out. He got clear to yeah. the uh, the betting allegations and stuff like that. But now there's a whole nother like different yeah. thing going on. I I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't know, like, man. Okay. I don't even, so, whatever. So I'm Poor not girl. anticipating seeing him beat Evander Kane this season. You know. So. Hey, man, if you fucking torture your broad enough, you cheat on her all the fucking time. She's gonna be crazy too. Like you can't yeah. turn you crazy if you're a fucking joke of a husband or whatever. You know. Like you can't. It's just like if she drives you fucking nuts, you could be a good dude and just go crazy yeah. because your wife fucking drives you nuts. So yeah, you know, I don't blame her if she says crazy shit right now because he probably fucking drove her nuts. Imagine getting calls by other women like he owes me three million dollars because I got an abortion after he fucked me. You're like what? Why? What are we talking about? Wait, that like, what? What? Did that happen? You didn't hear those allegations? He's paying no. fucking women out to get abortions, and then and then he he told three million. He got another, then he got another chick pregnant. And he's like, I'm going to pay you money to get it. And then he never paid her. And she she got an abortion. Ah, fuck, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 listen, let me just let me just be honest. But don't impregnate women. I'm not. 
following that story closely when i see it i say i'm not like clicking on i gotta read all about it like i some I things are, Look, are more interesting to me than others that whole story is not that well interesting. you're just a weird dude if you're fucking doing that i don't know no, I, you're, you're I wouldn't paying off women. To, I don't know. Hey, look, it could be disagree. False. Wouldn't disagree. Wouldn't disagree. I think my you wife would be, be a little pissed if uh, she got yeah. calls and said, uh, yeah. "Camera, uh, uh, a good old camera owes me a, a half of schmill because I had an yes. abortion." She'd be like, "Oh, yeah. I might have a yeah. talk with him." Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, know. yeah. You can't so. be doing that. I don't know. Some people are just messed up, man. Hey. Yeah, the old saying, Cam, you know, back in my, in my, my neighborhood, you know, it's just mm-hmm. like, you know, you, you do you, you know, you, whoever you want to be like, I hey, listen, all good. Like you do, you do whatever makes you happy, man. But you know, you just gotta, you gotta handle the consequences sometimes. Does that make you happy? Impregnating chicks and paying them off no. to get abortion? No. I don't know. How could no. that fucking no. make you any happy? No. I mean, especially no. when you have no. wife and kids. Hey. Like, what the fuck? But- you don't you don't get yourself in certain jams by accident. I mean, it is what it is. Like, yeah, you didn't fall and your penis went in her vagina. And I was like, oh, what, where are we at? You know, it just doesn't, you mm-hmm. don't trip and fall and that happened. You know? it, so it didn't, it's all good. didn't, d- didn't happen like that. No, yeah, it doesn't happen. I've had some accidents and stuff like that. But, 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 but nothing like that, Cam. Yeah. yeah. When I wheel well, them back and I trip and fall, and I'm like, oh, hi, you know. But uh, yeah, oh, I didn't yeah. trip and fall and fly over to Europe and bang a chick and then trip and fall and come back. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> that's what he. That's apparently what he did. He's like flying over to Europe and fucking uh, whatever, yeah. whatever, whatever. You broke her tooth. You did break her tooth. You know? I broke some chick's tooth. Uh, not uh, like a, I, I didn't mean to do it. It was a big champagne bottle, and it was still full, and I didn't have a good grip on it. And now she uh, had to probably get a new tooth put in. Like like all the way out. Man, not I don't remember. It wasn't good. Okay. It wasn't good. She's it wasn't a probably good Probably listening to She was really good looking too. And I was thought that I had a chance and then I broke her tooth. And I'm like, no, I certainly don't. And I'm like, oh, okay. Then I moved on. She's probably listening and she uh, is probably going to want to have some words with you and revisit I, this well, situation. I, was, I got bumped. I got bumped by somebody. So that's the guy that fucked us. Oh. The guy that bumped me. He's got to go back in time. Else. Yeah. Now you're blaming somebody else. I think it was Matt Sundin, to be honest with you. We'll blame I, it on I don't him. understand. Like you weren't playing against Matt Sunday. I don't. He was just he was there? in goddamn Sweden. Was he, he was like the ambassador? Sweden. Was he the yeah, ambassador he in, for the yeah, game? He, yeah, he was entire. He was retired in Sweden, probably working there, Parliament. Who knows? I think you're um, confusing him with somebody. I just feel like it's. Oh, like, is he uh, Finnish or something? I'm sorry. No, I don't know. He's Swedish. Was. Somebody he was in from the Red, Somebody from the Red Wings. The Dude, it's that Steenie Weenie. Steenie Weenie's the one that knows him. Steiner knew him and he fucking brought him. Steenie. I think Steenie when he was pissed at me at the end of the night. I feel like one. he still is pissed. He still is pissed. Mad. Why is he mad at me? What the fuck I do? I don't know. Something do you do. he doesn't like you about something. I don't know why. What did I do? I don't know. I don't know. I made him laugh every fucking day. Well, probably because you call him Steenie Weenie. He may not. Dude, like he made that. a shirt out of it. He did. Fine. I remember that. I remember that. Such All right. a grading so name. This was Jake Allen. Presented by Hair Club. Hope everybody yeah. enjoyed that. Hair Club, again, check them out online, hairclub.com. They've got solutions for everybody, over 700 of them. They even cut your hair. They can style your hair. You can go in there and get your hair styled and do whatever you really want to do. That's the best. They do a girl. Oh, man. I love going. They take their time. I Listen yes. to me. When I get my fucking haircut, I want everybody to know. I don't want to talk to anybody. I'll go in there. I'm going to smile. I might say a joke. I might make you laugh off the bat, but then once I get in that fucking chair and you put that little thing around my neck, my eyes are going down, so I'm falling asleep and you just take your time. Be I meticulous. Know. Every hair yeah. counts. It's very uneven. I want you to, the task in hand is my head and my head of hair. That's all that matters. I'm going right. to sleep, keep my chin up. I'll do, I'll lift my chin up. I can still do that, but I want to pass out. I don't want you to talk to me and just I take know. your time and make me beautiful. Nice well, baby. I've got a French Canadian uh, hairdresser. She's won uh, several awards, as a matter of fact. She's very good. Um, <laughs> she is a very talented cam. The way she can use her right hand or her left hand, it's amazing how she can use either one. And I um, like them girls. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I can't, why, why do you have to go there? It's well, they, my cut, they, they got two. They got they're like Edward scissor hands. They can do it's both. Amazing. Like, blah, blah, blah. It's crazy. She'll have so. two scissors going on at one time. It's amazing. Uh, so anyway, so Hair Club, yeah. check that out. Hairclub.com and uh, get, you know, the a solution for you. Like you don't have to live in a world where if you You're want hair, bald. you don't. <laughs> you don't need to be. Fu- I'll say it, Andy. I'll take over. You don't need to be fucking bald now. There's options. 
You don't need to be goddamn bald. You don't need to stare at yourself in the fucking mirror and be like, why is my hair falling out? I have no, con- I want to wheel girls and now I have no confidence. You have an option now. Give them a call, look up online, hairclubformid.com, check it out and set up a goddamn appointment. It's the easiest thing in the world. No one gives a shit when you walk in. They're not going to be like, oh, here's another bald guy. They don't give a fuck. Go in there. No one's talking. No one's going to look at you. No one's critiquing you. Go in there and get your goddamn thing done. Get to set up your appointment. They'll tell you everything you need to know about your balding fucking head, which I have too. Don't worry about it. And they'll fix it. Mm. And they'll give you a payment option. It's yeah, you can finance it. You can finance your uh, yes. getting your hair back. Get your life back. Get your hair back. Thank you. God damn. Have you ever thought about just shaving your head? Hell no, dude. I got too much hair for that, baby. They got oh, shit. If I didn't go to, if I didn't get it done, I would have mm-hmm. shaved my head a long time ago. Look like Stone Cold Steve yeah. Austin, but I got hair and I look kind of sexy. I went and had a haircut um, recently, Cam. It was oh. she. It was sixty five dollars, and then it was another sixty five bucks. Yeah, and then she's like, <laughs> you know what? She was like, here, I'm gonna color it for you, and she kind of like colored it. It didn't work. And no, she charged me another like eighty dollars for that. It was like okay, I, I, it's like a scam or something. Like you didn't tell no, no, me no. beforehand. Was your wife like? Let me ask you something, Andy. Oh, I came home. I was no, like, no, no. oh my god, let me I ask just you spent like a hundred and fifty bucks on a. She's haircut. like, oh, where's that? Oh, with that beautiful French woman. Oh, no, it was different. Someone different. It was someone different. Bucks with a hot woman. It was different. It was you different. deserve to get fucking chirped for that. You spent a. You spent a basically fucking 200 bucks on your fucking dinky fuck hair and they didn't even die because you still got gray hair. Well, and that was your like wife over... looks at the receipt and she's like, you're hanging out with some hot chick and spending 200 bucks on her and she didn't do a fucking thing to your hair. That's unacceptable in my opinion. Hey, that was over 25 washes ago and it comes out after 25 washes. Oh, it came out. So, so oh, it came I out went, with a vengeance. So I just, I just went back to my French Canadian. I went back there. You're just going. Back I may go back to, to these the hot other. chicks. I, aren't I you? may go back. You're to hanging the other out. Though. No, 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 no. You're hanging out with hot chicks, and you're fucking sitting there. You're probably telling stories. You're, and they're probably ripping you off so bad. They want you to come in there. So they're like, "Oh God, here's Andy. Okay, here we go. Well, let's just flirt with them a little bit." Then you go in there, and they're like, "Andy, you need this done." It's well, okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're fucking tacking it on, tacking it on, and by the and at the end of it, you five hundred dollars down the drain. Your hair looks the fucking same, and now your wife's pissed at you. <laughs> It was amazing. It was, I mean, Go to hair she, club. She cuts a number of uh, NHL players' hair too. This the girl they who wear a ton of money and they got hair. I know. I, they you got like have, a lot of. They Andy, got like I a lot of hair. Fucking, Andy, I can cut your hair for no, you nothing. Could. Yes, I no, could. could. Yes, I could. Are you coming to the cut. Halloween party? Or Fuck no. no. Fuck Dude, no. I can't. I haven't even told Laura yet that you said no to the. I'll Halloween tell her. Party. Tell her. I'll text well, what's, her right your now. Re- what's your reasoning? Because I don't want to. Damn. <laughs> Dude, I invited you. I don't care. Well, maybe we'll have you over for like uh, Thanksgiving or something, or uh, even that. How about you just Christmas put it on, like, a Day? Wednesday? What about Christmas yeah. Day? Or uh, no, no. <laughs> Jesus, I'm not going over there, man. New Year's what? Eve. Fuck no. I might, be, I might be in Minnesota oh, yeah. for that Drive home? Classic. Yeah, let's drive home from your house on New Year's Eve. That'd be I might cool. be in Minnesota for that Winter Classic this year. Are they going to have an alumni skate in that mug or no, what? No, they're not. They're yeah. not having one. Look, I ain't going then. Yeah, I heard they're not having no alumni game. They got, they're getting oh, rid cool. of it. Guys don't want to play, I guess, or something like that. So I don't know. Fuck, I do. <laughs> You're like the only one. I know. Cam's like, can I just play can myself? Play? Like, no, we got this like one guy. We're going to have another guy that came in that no one knows, but we like him. <laughs> Jeez. All right. Cam and Strick Podcast, always brought to you by Car Shield as well. 800 857 2481 carshield.com. Save yourself the embarrassment, save yourself the trouble, and save yourself money. That is the most important thing. Use the promo code CAM. I know it's embarrassing. I listen, I hear you, but it's going to save you 10%. So go ahead and use that. Why is that embarrassing? Do I have a bad reputation? Do I have a bad reputation? Well, it's kind of like local local legend. Local legend, you use the promo code (laughs) Strick. I mean, you can go a different way. And I'm sure they would probably, if you said Strick, they know who you're talking about. They they would say, okay, we'll still give it to you. Maybe even a little more. It's probably like 11%, 12% over there, Car Shield. Uh, carshield.com 800-857-2481 baby so go ahead and uh and do your thing with all of that 
car shield and car shield.com again computer you know alternator brakes whatever i mean starter goes out whatever it is it'll save you lots of money how about our friend over there at bellman.com b-e-h-l-m-a-n-n.com dan bellman dan the man you talk about local legends he certainly falls in that category he's got that chrysler dodge jeep ram on one side of the street on the other side in Troy, Missouri, he's got the Cadillac Buick DMC. So they have something for everybody. Bellman.com. Check that out and check it out today. Always support the sponsors. Daredevilhockey.com. Be a local legend.com. My custom sports chair.com. Get that cam and strict chair. Send us pictures. I want Instagram pictures. Send us messages when yeah, you're supporting like any of our sponsors, dude. And we'll put Leave them a message up or a, yes. uh, a comment on uh, Google and stuff, too. Oh, right? yeah. Or, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Give us the five star rating. And I want to see rating. some yep. uh, reviews. Keep those reviews, reviews. coming over there. Yes. And do we owe somebody something for the reviews, too? I don't know. Brody's owe? handling that. OK, so we got yeah, somebody won. And we're going to let you know who won. And we're going to take care yes. of you. Um, send you some merch, do a cool video yes. with Andy and I. As long as you want to go, we'll fucking chat. I can tell stories. Yes. I'll fucking beat yes. the fuck out of Andy. Yeah. And I might even have him next to me and I might smack his ass around. We could do that actually. Well, you just come over to my house because right. I ain't going to your fucking house. We could do and you that. come and you go yeah, to my can, house. I can come over here. I bag your ass up in front of everybody. It'd be hilarious. Uh, five star review. Uh, give us a little review too. Chirp doesn't matter. We love you guys. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Um, our, our website too, camistrip.com. Uh, our Instagram, both Cam Jansen twenty five, Andy Strickland, something biz nasty, something he copies biz. What is it? Uh, uh, oh no, what, no, Strick I didn't. Nasty. It's at real Strick Nasty, and okay. I was given the nickname Strick Nasty long before. Yeah, I'm sure you were. Okay, so we got we got Instagram, long we got biz nasty, we got Twitter, we got Facebook, we got our website, we got cameos. Both of us do cameos. Andy's got yes, like I three. Do. I got like eighty done. Uh, and he's got his third one coming, so he's doing pretty good. He's on a good roll there. He's got uh, one in a row. Cam, which is somebody good. just asked me for a cameo, yeah. and I had 24 hours to do it. Yeah, I've done and that, I too. You suck and it I up. did it within 24 hours. You get paid hours. more money. You get paid yes, more money did. that way. Yes, I yes, I did. Do you ever do take always... the money out of your account yet? You could take that 50 bucks out of your account yet? Oh, I do it, like, right away. I do it right away. It takes, um, like, no, six let me... days to get in your account. Okay, let me ask you this though. Mm -hmm. Do you does every cameo you do? Do they always give you like a review right away, or do they not? Not no, everybody. Not every time. Too. No, not every time. Yeah. But they do. That, they usually give. It does that make you wonder? Like, did they like it? Do they not? Yeah, like it? yeah, like, no doubt. Me too. Hundred percent. I'm then dealing I with that right now. I do so, the like, same I thing. Just, I just gave out a a, a, a cameo, and I, I haven't gotten that review. The first one. I talked five minutes straight. I talked for five minutes straight, me nonstop, too. nonstop. I go five minutes nonstop. And sometimes yeah. I'm like, fuck. Sometimes I look at myself. I'm like, oh, my God, I look wasted. I'm like, oh, fuck. Do you think they're well, going to you like, probably were. Me? One time I really was. <laughs> we had 24 hour one. Hey. I'm like, Kate's like, put clear eyes. And I'm like, ah. You, know, you ever see Brett like, Hall's cameo he did for yeah. like a little kid? Yeah. He looks fucking horrible. He looks scary with his mohawk. Like two in the morning or something. He was like, he hey, terrible. it's your birthday. The kid's crying like, who is this monster? Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, and maybe Cam and I will even do joint cam cameos. I don't know if we have to sign up separate for that or something like that. Well, you pay maybe, me. No, you pay, pay me, me directly. Yeah, pay me. <laughs> no, we're not doing your fucking. You charge $6. <laughs> no, right now they're each. on. Right now they're on sale. My cameos yeah. are on sale, so hit two me bucks up. I'll be happy to, for two be happy to give you, be happy to give you a cameo. All right, um, and again, uh, my custom sports chair. Be a local legend, everybody, man. We appreciate everybody's support here on the podcast. Support all our sponsors. www.camandstrict.com. That's our website. If you want to listen to any other past episodes, check out the merchandise from Wingman Sports. Everything. Black River Digital, all the boys over there hooking us up and helping us out. Brody. Yeah, all uh, y'all. Love all you. Everybody. The entire yeah. team over yeah. here at, uh, at Cam and Strickman, we appreciate yeah. all the support. And today's our two-year anniversary, dude. It's a Yay! Big deal. Seems like two eight years. years, dude. It feels, feels like, like it. Yeah, it feels like eight years, man. Who was, our been second, who was the second guest we ever had on? Do you even know? Fuck no. I can't remember. Neither do I. Ryan O'Reilly was the first Probably Barnaby first or something. One. Barney, people are like, "Hey, have you ever gone back and listened to the first one?" I'm like, "No, I'm no. Not afraid to listen to the first one." I'm already, I'm already afraid to listen. To my hate, my, I would I be like crawled up in a ball. I'd be crawled up in a ball. Like it would hurt. Like it would just be like the most I would feel agonizing guess, thing like ever. Naked with a small penis in front of a bunch of women. 
And I'm like, <laughs> eh. And I'm like, oh eh, help God. me. Like, please stop. I don't, stop I can't, I don't want to listen to it. Oh, God. No, I, I'm so, I hate one. my voice. I hate everything. I'm I was like, Cam, do not, don't cuss too much. I don't, I didn't do it. Oh, hey, let me say something. (laughs) Hey, no, let me, this is what I was going to say. Two years in, our first episode was at fucking Enterprise Center with Ryan O'Reilly, the captain. The Blues just won the cup. Mm -hmm. And the whole fucking organization did not like us at the time. Everybody was getting podcasts, and I completely understand where they were coming from, where they're like, what the fuck? What do you mean they didn't like us? Let me explain it. Because I know you're going to be yes, like, watch they, yourself, yes, Cam. I don't did. give a shit. No, no, no. They looked at us like we were going to step on their toes and grab all the players and be annoying as fuck, just like everybody else's, which they should be because they had to, they have to do it. And they take all the guys and Crusoe and the guys are like, God damn it, another fucking podcast. You ain't fucking spitting chiclets. You'll never be. And we're like, okay. And then we didn't bug them for anything. We did our own thing. We built it up organically. And all of a sudden, they all started supporting us. And they understood us. And I got, I understood it at the, t- at the time. Because I it just makes it too much hassle. And now we're controversial. And now we're gritting all the blues guys. And I'm, they're probably like, fuck you. Everybody's jumping on board after we won. I completely understand that. But we did our own thing, Andy. And we got to be – I chirp you a lot. But we busted our ass. And we're in a good spot. And we didn't have anybody help us with anything. And we just did it. We didn't piss anybody off except for maybe a couple little guys here and there. But uh, we proved to them that we could do it organically. And now it's funny. They all listen. And that's it. Am I wrong on this? In the books, baby. No, you're right. No shit. Thanks for supporting us on the Camus Podcast. Presented by Hair Club, baby.